head soon, man. Shut up. It's coming uh-huh. down the back soon. Yeah. No, <laughs> keep, the, keep the, the, the front mullet. The back <laughs> yeah, Don't keep the mullet. Skull it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that is a good point, though, that it continues down the neck. I like <laughs> I love how bootleg like this podcast is. We got a timer in the back. <laughs> yeah. so well, do you I'm, sure, like, check I'm it? sure what's his name has a thing. Yeah. Do you have to check it? It, it might <laughs> automatically turn off. Right? No. Uh, uh, the last one I did, I tried with my phone. I just downgraded the resolution a little bit, and it yeah, will record as long as the battery power. That's awesome. Yeah, do you? 240p. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look like Legos, though. So. <laughs> It'll be worth it. The floor's a little soft right here. Oh, I'm shit. Meet the meat Don't right lean here. back. 3D's out, fellas. No, I'm just kidding. No, fuck. Random Sponsored banana. by 3D Energy. <laughs> and, uh... Tape over the logo. <laughs> Since I have to hold the mic the whole time, I'm going to go... <laughs> Every sip. <laughs> Can you see? Does it connect or, or are you just looking at the microphones? Microphones. And we're recording. Should we like screen the card before? Oh, we, yeah. they're already fucked up. Yeah, they're real bad. Well, we are all of them, so hold on. So I know that there's three different types of cards. Ask the internet, poll, no, it's poll the internet. And debate the internet. Debate the internet. And there's, I think, a third one. No, that's, that is the third. There's no. ask, debate, answer the, answer the, answer the internet, internet, poll the internet, and debate the internet. When's this thing starting? It's starting now. So, What's up? what is up? It's just one track? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I adjusted them all. Brock was with me. I adjusted them all to where they sounded decent. All decent. Nice. Yeah. I didn't realize that. But, uh, Check. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure mine works last time. <laughs> all right, oh, well, yeah. Let's take do we want to run down it? Check. 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 Got it. Perfect. Yours is on, Griff? Yes. Well, let's see. Yeah, it's good okay. now, yeah. All right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, we're, I, well, not we're, I'm, I'm new. <laughs> so uh, this is the All or Nothing show, and uh, I got the squad out here today. And uh, we're going to see how far, like I mentioned on Instagram earlier, how far we can just get down the rabbit hole, just shooting the breeze, just shooting the breeze with the boys with some cold 3Ds. So uh, we're going to start this show off with a nice... Good old fashioned review, since none of us have tried this one, right? No. No. Let's go ahead and crack crack the top. No peeking. <laughs> so this is the I guess their newest flavor that they just dropped, I don't know how long ago. I haven't tried them. I haven't tried all of the 3D flavors, so remember, fellas, get a few sips and uh, we're doing one to five. Do it like no, don't do it coffee taste. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which by the way, that was like the one of the weirdest not not bad, but like, that's like a cult thing, man. I like, told y'all that like the cupping is like super weird. How they slurp it. It's like if you do it wrong, you just feel weird. But like, all right. So for y'all that don't know, I, we have a local, or I guess a few local breweries or not breweries, roasting roasters. Cupping? Roasters. Roasters. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got Excel. a few. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm getting to it. There's a place called Blanchard's, and they, they sell them at a few big stores around Richmond, so they're kind of big. And uh, they do a roasting every Friday, and Brock invited me no, and Griffin. I, I, mean, well, I don't know how to explain it. I keep wanting to call right, it I forget the name. <laughs> well, I don't know how to explain it. Okay. They roast coffee all the time, okay? They sell it, you know, on their website. They sell it across the country, nation, whatever it is. Like you said, they're in Kroger local stores. But on Fridays, a lot of uh, what not many places do is they do a public cupping, so... What a cupping is, is basically a national or international standard of how they taste coffees, compare them, blah, blah, blah. So, point is, they have them free at Blanchard's, which is kind of rare for them to just have the public come in. As many people, you know, as whatever. It's usually like 8 to 12 people or something like that. Sometimes it's less. And they come in, and they'll have six different coffees on the table. We'll go around smelling them, then tasting them. There's a certain way that all that goes about. But anyway, I always enjoy it, so I was like, let's... Let me bring Griffin and Austin. They enjoy coffee, but they don't really know what specialty coffee is like. They don't know the difference. So, brought them along, and you guys can carry right, on. So, don't, uh, don't judge me thinking I don't know what's... I drink some good old Dunkin' Donuts blend. Man. I like that. That's man. specialty. Yeah, I drink Bang. Donuts, uh, <laughs> I'm not a coffee a bang hey, Austin, Austin told us he bruises or, or grinds his beans in a blender. So, <laughs> it's, like, wait, hold on. it's a ninja, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> It's a ninja. And by the way, <laughs> whatever it takes, <laughs> getting it done. It. Getting it done. But uh, it tastes great to me. I I love it. And anyways, getting back to it, it. there's a lot of people uh, 
I'm, I'm sure it's just a clip, just like people in body button, kind of weird to the outside people, but mm, it's oh, definitely like, like serious. Like, yeah, serious. Like, like people, it's like, serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, like, you just told me that the guy went to a brewing or roasting. Yeah, the guy that runs it, John, he uh, or runs the public company. He's like the head of education at uh, Blanchard's. He just went to Orange County, California, for the national competition they do every year for they do one for um baristas you know so things you'll like lattes and such and then also they have one for just brewing um you to pour over french press whatever and so he did that and uh play six which is pretty cool but anyway but yeah it's just as like any any hobby or whatever it is there's there's extremes to it yeah so what do we think fellas i like it it's different i, I wasn't expecting for some reason i was expecting a cola Kind of reminds me of Fresca. Reminds me of Natter Days. Ooh, that's it. That's everything. Dude, right. Yeah, it's very, everything. It's very hard on the lemon. The lemon's hard. Like the lemon's it's good though. I like it. It's a lemon yeah. in it. I don't know yeah. what are the flavors. Maybe strawberry. It's like a white monster. Yeah, I wasn't sure what yeah, to say. Something with the like all the chrome uh, appeal and like the pictures I saw, but I get a little strawberry. <laughs> Definitely, it's a lemon. So one to five from me. Oh, it's like a it's like a sprite with a little. Yeah, exactly. Strawberry, a little, infant, yeah. a little more fruit flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one to five, and like I mentioned before, it's big jumps between those numbers. It's I'm a nice game. <laughs> I'm going three point nine. Out of all the energy drinks I've ever, ever tried, really, yeah, three point eight. I would say, <laughs> I would say probably a four, um, but it is the best three D that I've tried. Yeah, I was gonna go with four, but I mean, I didn't know if you could add the points to it than yeah. decibels. Well, like decibels. I, I, decibels. Decibels. It if you've I've never watched yeah. 50 points. Yeah. 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 Well, if you've never watched, there's a huge jump between 1 to 2 and 3 to 4 and 4 to well, 5, yeah. right? So that. you got to throw in the decimal. All right, well, then I'll, I'll you say could have just made the scale four. 1 to 10, though. Yeah, well, it's too late now. Maybe next time. We're rolling. But, uh, yeah, they're pretty good. Especially, uh, I guess, I've tried a few of the other flavors, and this is probably my... Uh, the green's probably my favorite. This but, is my first, so it's I mean, it's good. Yeah. I'm Anyways, a monster guy. What's everybody been up to? What have you been up to, Griffin? What do you do today? Today, um, I woke up early. I trained some legs, tried out squat shoes for the first time. Um, uh, yeah, I saw you. I forgot. And then after that, I went home and I worked on editing a video for Brock. And then after that, I went and got a massage, and now I'm here. Oh, so, he's feeling more fresh. Yeah. yeah, I'm very zen. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of fire in me. <laughs> Might pop so, off in this bitch. Oh, and I was gonna tell you too. We'll keep it brief, but I just ordered too a uh, external hard drive because I finally need to make the upgrade to uh. Windows 10. I've been putting it off so long. How, how old is Windows but, 10? Isn't Windows 10 pretty old? Probably like five years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like seven better. Windows 10, I don't like to have like the Siri. I don't like it giving me notifications and stuff like that. They're trying to make it more like, you know how Apple, everything yeah. is connected, the watch, everything like yeah. that. They're trying to do more stuff like that. And I don't know. Like, I like to control the computer. I don't like, <laughs> it's the like computer finally moving from stuff. the flip phone. So, oh, I know. I'd go back to a flip phone if I could. <laughs> it keeps it simple. And I was just, I forgot who I was talking to about that back in like high school. I remember being able to hold my flip phone under the table and text because you, yeah, you were telling us to. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You just memorize. Yeah, the numbers. Exactly. But what'd what you think of the Roma Leos? I know it put you uh, on the list. It felt good. It felt like just being in my Dude, it looks yeah. so It kind of made me feel like I was wearing like clogs or like hooves or something like You're that. You're like, yeah, <laughs> when I first used them, like, you're stepping back, and instead of just being able to like wiggle your toes or move your heel, you like can't. Like you're you have to pick yeah. up your yeah, foot. Yeah. Like, like you're I was locked surprised though, because like like, I yeah. did them for high bar and I did them for front squats, and I was surprised. Like I didn't go too crazy with the weight, but I could really feel like I was just sinking down, and it was like just like a jet engine or something. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you when I was using the other so, when we had legs. They I'm look surprised. like Batman's. Like if Batman lifted, there would be Batman shoes because they're all murdered out in black. Wait, he got the all black. Mine yeah, have like man. the white logo. So like, yeah, got the... No, I'm I'm all black, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I took a twenty three and me. One hundred percent, baby. <laughs> so damn it. No, they're Good. cool. I I always debate though between flats and and squat shoes. So I yeah. think I'll keep the flats for low bars and deadlifts and other stuff. 
I'm still fun to trade it off. The thing is, is barefoot, kind of about half and baby. <laughs> yeah, dude, wait, that dude's feet, man. Well, yeah, he's got like eight troll feet. feet. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shred. I feel like he could probably like, like run on all fours. Uh, and he looks like a just vanilla gorilla. Around. Like he, I feel like he grips with his toes yeah. as he walks. Too. He's got part like Aborigine in him or some shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah he's caveman. But I wanted to get back to like. Squat shoes versus flats. And I have had Romaleos before. Like I mentioned, I had the, the version before yours. I enjoyed them for about a year. But the thing is, is like, once you take them off, everything's different. You know, your squat's different. If you don't have them on a squat thing, you're so used to squatting with them. Yeah. For me, I couldn't, it took me forever to squat back in regular shoes or just barefoot again. True. Because my ankle mobility got used to that range. So I, yeah, well, I mean, but I loved the, the shoes, but... Some days I'd forget them on a squat day. I'm like, damn, well, I guess I'm not squatting today. And it's like, well, what's the point of that? You know? Yeah, I went, like, when I first got mine, I went a while where I was wearing them for, like you said, like about a year. Mm -hmm. And then I went off of them. And, uh, I mean, it's, it is different because the whole ankle angle. And so I felt like when I started using them, I was losing, like, my ankle mobility because I wasn't kind of forced to have as much, I guess, uh, dorsiflexion, you know, when you're in the bottom of a squat. And then so coming back to it, it's like I tell my clients, too, like one of my clients got Olympic lifting shoes, and I was like, we're going to have to like almost completely relearn your squat the next few weeks because it is like a different movement because it also kind of affects your back angle, I feel like, too. Yeah, and that's one thing, too. I, I've i never really liked to be, to feel like I'm the guy that like needs all the equipment, you know. You, I'm yeah. sure you see a lot no. of people that yeah. have like... <laughs> The knee sleeves, the belt, the the lifting shoes, the nose torque, all that other stuff, and they're squatting like two twenty five. At VCU, the the powerlifting club, and uh, some of them are crazy strong. So you know, it's credit to them. But there's a lot of them that you know squat, you know, just somewhat average weight. But you know, they're, they're like sitting in the corner, like throwing on their knee sleeves, got their belt ready, wrist straps, everything is like ready, like you said. And it's like just to put on like you know two seventy five or three fifteen. It's like it's like, it's like what's holding your I, body together. Yeah, it's <laughs> like it's like do you need all of that? Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. For a while, I always put on the belt because I was like, okay, I can push more weight, and you can push more weight. But it's like, is it really like worth it? And I, you know, I don't know. I just feel like it's so much extra stuff. Like he's like, if you rely on that to like push sure. the weight, it's yeah. like, are you really that strong? And I've always kind of had. My mentality is like I want to at least get to a certain standard before I start introducing like an extra little stepping stone like that. Like I I want to be able to rep four hundred five on deadlift and then above that I'll start wearing a, a belt or other yeah. things like that. I do wear the Versa grips, but like for bench or other things like that, I just I don't really like to use the assistance unless it's above a certain kind of standard. I guess I have yeah. for myself. Because otherwise, I feel yeah. like to be able to get to that point, you need to be able to. I feel like sometimes people mask or kind of put tape over poor programming, poor uh, like body mechanics just to be able to kind of get to that next point. So I want to make sure that kind of all my ducks are in a row beforehand. Yeah, I want to have a, a strong base well, to yeah. grab up too. Yeah, sure. we were talking about longevity like the other day when we were hitting chest and back and it's like, especially like with your joints too, or I mean if strength, if like lifting the most amount of weight in powerlifting is like your thing, then okay, then I guess you got to make lift the max amount of weight but i mean if you're talking about like longevity then just do the weight your body can handle without the equipment yes um and then instead of overloading with an extra 30 pounds that's just again putting more weight than your joints can probably like handle at the moment it's just i don't know it just seems egotistic you know and less productive i don't know yeah and getting back to like griffin was saying is like you, you should definitely do a b and c before you jump straight to G, you know, <laughs> true, whatever with, you know, adding all this equipment and shit like that. If, I don't know. I've been able to, not to say that I'm strong or anything, but like, I feel like the belt messes my form up. Like I hate squatting with it. I think it, I get, for some reason when I'm deadlifting or squatting, like it folds me forward a little bit sometimes. True. And I think sometimes too, really? like you, you don't brace properly because you kind of think that the belt will provide that support. Yeah. Um, yeah. As well yeah. as, um, was it? Oh, what were you saying just a second ago, Rap, about, I know you were talking about longevity, but... Well, you're talking about longevity, but no, you just made me think about something. I was talking to someone the other day, where it was this one dude that, um, he lives crazy well. He was repping like 500 for like five the other day, and um, he like uses a belt only for his max sets, and we were talking about how like, how you brace and breathe with a belt and without isn't actually the same, because like when you have the belt, you can have that kind of 
you feel the presence of the belt around your abdomen, so you breathe into the belt and you kind of push your abdomen out. But when you're bracing without a belt, you're tightening your core, but you're not breathing outward the same, so it's different. Yeah. I, and mm. I kind of liken it too to where, you know, like comparing your average gym bro to somebody that's like more of an experienced power lifter or somebody like that, they're going to go through some sort of block training to where like they're not going to be doing 90 or above percent of their max except for really on that one day where you kind of have yeah. to showcase your strength but everything else like it's kind of below the belt a little bit to where you always kind of leave a certain amount in the tank so i kind of like it the same way to where like usually i just think like okay if i do a pyramid or something like that on my top sets i'll use this but the other sets i want to make sure that i'm like actually bracing properly or yeah, things yeah. like that so i got a confession i want to see y'all's opinion oh god I've never done a deload. Have y'all ever done a deload? <laughs> I have, but it's like a weird. Like a real deload. Like not just I went off light on squats <laughs> or I took a light day. Like, like an entire purposeful week where you went like half volume or half intensity. Like unrack my weights. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've, I've done it before to where it was just like pretty much body weight kind of more balanced or like unilateral oriented reps like 15, 20 weight. Yeah. Nothing too crazy and I just like wanted to throw up. I just, it was just my problem. I just felt is, like I'm just getting annoyed. I'm not getting sore. That's but. what I'm saying. Like I know my thing is like I know that if I go in and let's say I do sixty percent of my volume or exactly however people advise you to do like a deload, like I know that I'm not gonna just like lose all my strength, it's gonna be gone. And I get the idea of you're going through a less trained state so that your body, you know, whether it's overtrained or very sore, it gives your chance your body the chance to fully like recover and then your gains will kinda like keep going up um, linearly. But I just can't get over the mind of like going in, doing basically doing a half ass workout on purpose. Yeah. I and then like leaving. Off. Like because if, if it was as simple as just do less weight, but I can still go near failure, get a pump, then that's fine. But I know that like that's not really a deload. Like you have to like go like half intensity or, or like half volume, whatever it is. I know it's like basically purposefully doing a half ass workout. And like I can't yeah. commit myself to that. Like for a whole week, I could do one day, but not so, a whole yeah, week of that. I could do a day, but not. Like, I I, uh, that kind of actually brings me in. I had written some questions throughout the day, but one of them was I was going to ask you guys. Um, this guy came prepared. <laughs> well, you know, I, I just figured I was going to say how. Speaking of which, since that's more of like a a research kind of tried and true thing, how do you balance that kind of by the book oh, mentality yeah, we, yeah, with we were talking kind of more this, so yeah. like a bro and wanting to push it and wanting to kind of do more of that bodybuilder style or like you know what i mean like more so like a meathead mentality versus like kind of what's tried and true scientific if that makes sense like what would you say the balance for you is for that I don't know, i'll say what i'll say and i want to hear what you guys think it's like you know what i've always said is like i feel like science of course has its place and it's factual and it's like so important especially when it comes to teaching movement or technique or biomechanics or anything like that um and it definitely works especially with strength um but definitely like with <clears throat> a subjective sport like bodybuilding or trying to grow size to where it's not as black and white what equals muscle growth i feel like there's a lot of gray area as far as um what works and what doesn't with training like i don't know like i'm not gonna go in and program my bicep curls you know like i'm not gonna go in and train off percentages all the time because that almost takes the fun out of it yeah and um you know, at the same time, I feel like a lot of times uh, things that bodybuilders do that seem just kind of meatheadish or stupid um, turn out to like actually have uh, cause for, you know, cause to do them basically. Uh, be like for you know the example with a pound of uh, or gram of protein per pound of body weight, like that ended up being pretty close to accurate um, when science like supporting it. I feel like it's the same deal with supersets or for going for the pump. Like obviously, going for the pump, pushing a lot of blood flow, nutrients, and everything. Like, that has to make sense to lead to growth, although you can't, like, it's not as black and white as, um, you know, a progression that's based on calculations. But, like, you know, to, I guess, loop it back together in one statement, like, I feel like there's a place for science and um, a meathead or just bro mentality of training because True. you're not going to have fun just going in off numbers all the time, you know. And that's the one thing I would say, too, is one example that I think about sometimes is, like, they say that you can't target your upper chest or something like that but i think that sometimes you have to just kind of you know like read it take it for what it is and then apply it to yourself to where like i feel like i engage certain areas better i feel like if i turn my feet out i can 
feel it more in a certain part of my quad. So sometimes I feel like you kind of just have to try to learn as much as you can, but then audit it a little bit and see how it applies to you as well. Yeah. So. I think everybody's body in regards to like angles and foot placement, hand placement, stuff like that. Everybody's mechanics is definitely different. So there's no like certain thing about like grips, stance and stuff like that to the certain point, you know what I'm saying? But I've never done programming per se for, I did it once with squat. I did a small off junior squat program and, uh, my squat definitely went up. I didn't hit my goal, but, uh, definitely went up. It jumped up like 40, 45 pounds, I think. And uh, that was pretty fun, but I never did any other programming besides that one time. Do you like to just kind of mix it up every time? Yeah, so pretty much when I go in, though, I still do a typical bro. Um, I do chest, triceps, back biceps, arm day, shoulders. I do split my legs into two different days, quad dominant, ha hamstring dominant, like a push-pull day type thing. And uh, rep ranges are 12 to 15. Nice. Or like failure, hurt, something like that Yeah. when they start hurting. What about you, Jake? I've never followed a program. Uh, I get fashion. <laughs> uh, I, I've never done it. Like, not that I have anything against them. I just, I don't know. I guess I've never, not very disciplined when it, when it comes to the gym. Like, yeah. I just go in there and kind of do what feels right for the day. True. I got a lot of days I go in there and have like a mindset of what I want to do. But like, yeah. I mean, some days I go in there and what I had planned. I feel like, it, yeah, so. I feel like there's room for, uh, you know, variation or just switching up too. Cause like, I mean, I always go in the only, the most closest thing to programming that I do is like, I'll have like my main, certainly like my main compound lifts of each workout or like each body part, like written down. And like, usually the first two or first three exercises are like mandatory in like my workouts, like, uh, for like, what is it? My Tuesday chest, chest and back workout. Like I always do incline chest press with the dumbbells. And then the next one is like a pec deck fly. But then after that, I kind of like mix it up or change things up. Yeah. But at least like the main, you know, the meat and potatoes yep. is there every time. And then as far as like progressing that, I just use mostly simple, small, linear progression where it's like, you know, extra rep here, extra set there, five pounds here. I kind of change up like the intensity or, um, you know, percentage of my one rep max. But I mean, it's kind of like up in the air sometimes. And so if you looked at it over months, you might be like, well, this could almost fit a program but then other times you'd be like what the hell is this guy doing you know <laughs> it's like this is a madman and that's the same sort of thing too i feel like and especially kind of in my last semester of school doing a lot of uh like strength and conditioning stuff it was interesting to see that like just how many different ways there are to skin a cat to where you almost i don't want to say second guess yourself but you almost think like oh well i could do like high volume this day and then high in, or like higher load this day and then switch it the other day and like you could taper one way or you could taper the other way and it's one of those things that the more that you learn with that kind of stuff i feel like the more you're just like ah get me back to when you i just it. wanted yeah, yeah you so. just overthink it like my uh, exercise science major like vcu and i feel like this is you know, the same with every school so i'm not calling out any school or person in particular but i mean university of phoenix yeah yeah ecpi um but it's like you know you can have all the tools and have all the calculations but at the end of the day you like got to go in and perform and like do it consistently so i feel like you know none of us really follow a program no. but we're still getting stronger true we're still getting and, and our, none of us have like the goal of powerlifting or like strength training but we're still getting stronger maybe not at the at the rate of the person following a program but at least we're having fun doing it we're not overthinking it and like some people again like if you if you're obsessed with like the numbers the calculations um the RPE. What, yeah the rpe once you get off that or like you know once you're away from that one you might not enjoy it as much or be confused and two uh, you might just feel like lost. Like, what do I do now? I don't know how to train without an RP yeah, or a percentage. True. And like, you need to have that intuition with your body, which I feel like bodybuilding does an amazing job of not just like having to feel for what works for you, what works for your body, but also you have like, I think we can kind of lead into this is like, uh, pump, I feel like is something, or like not pump, but mind muscle connection with the body is something that's hard to again, measure scientifically as well. But I mean, we all know like, once you can engage that muscle properly, um, during a row like if you're doing a cable row and you're doing a lot of bicep movement you're not going to have near as much progress as the person who's like engaging their lats properly and that's again something that's hard to measure scientifically or you're not going to get off like a percentage that just comes with time and experience and uh, body awareness I guess true and that's the thing too is like I like kind of having some 
measurable uh, way to track progress. But sometimes I feel like when I get too into the weeds with that, then I feel like every set has to be a PR because like if I look at, yeah. oh, I did 10 last week and I only did nine this week, like shit. Yeah, <laughs> Even though I'm if I done. feel like I felt it better, I'm going a better yeah. bump or something like that. So it's interesting sometimes to see like you kind of have to have a little tug of war one way or another too. I'm so. the worst with going in Especially on like, not so much with my legs because I'm like I, I'll tend to either do, I don't always squat on a leg day or at least a quad dominant day or anything like that. Sometimes I do the hack squat, sometimes I do leg press, whatever. But uh, especially like with bench per se for me, I always go in thinking I'm gonna be like, all right, I'm putting five more pounds on this time every time though, like or, or the two and a half since Lebrenum has the two and a half. So I'm like, oh, I can lift it. I'll throw those on. I'll lift that, and I usually end up. Not even getting close to it. Like, I'm even worse than last week. And I'm like, oh, sh- fuck this. Well, that's the yeah, other thing, too, me. is like, I mean, that's where RP training that's like been newer the past few years is like an advantage because, again, you have that freedom or at least breathing room to where you can go with how you're feeling. Um, but at the same time, like, that's so relative. Like, someday you might be feeling like crap, but your body can actually push more. Um, but then, like, with our training where we don't follow a program, we kind of already have RP built in. And, again, it goes back to, like, your own awareness of, like, what you can push today, how you're feeling. It's, like, it's almost like everything that we already do is, like, RP-based. We just yeah. don't have it written down, you know? True. See, some days I go to the gym at, like, peak hours, like, 5 o'clock, and then the place is jumping. Yeah, that does long, help. Wide open. Like, so some days I'll have a plan, and I get to the gym, and my plan is shit. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is on the same planet. Yeah. That's what surprises so, me about Willow Long. It's like, they've got how many squat racks now? And it's like, you can't find yeah, one. Yeah, dude. So it's like, like some days like, you're there, you're just making shit up as you go and make, making the most random shit work that you don't even want to do, but you, you're there, so you got to do something. Or that or wait 30 minutes for a squat rack. Yeah, that's true. Talk oh, a little bitch. bit more into your mic. I know. <laughs> he kept <laughs> Sorry, looking dude. at the yeah, mic. I, I, I <laughs> it up My bad. Yeah. Stop picking it up. Is that better now? Yeah, now you're picking up. Nice and clear. Okay, good. Want me to say all that again? Yeah, now you're... Yeah, <laughs> very, very non, uh, non-readable squiggles. <laughs> Just some <laughs> ASMR whispering. <laughs> Do you feel the tingles? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like to go in. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But, uh... So any goals in mind for any of y'all? What are, y- what are y'all training for right now? Anybody training for anything? Not training for anything. Well, I guess I'll jump in. I feel like I'm yeah, talking okay. about it anyway. Piped in. Let's go. Um, well, I'm bulking till December of this year Ooh. since I cut for so dang long and I felt like really small and skinny. So going to like 200 again, which would be interesting because I haven't been 200 since I think 2018 spring, like Easter. Yeah. So um, – that was uh, so. It'll be interesting to see. Hopefully, it'll look a lot better and less fluffy <laughs> over two years of gaining muscle. You know, but anyway, they, they point say is uh, two something ready to do something. Mm. No, <laughs> is that what they say? Now? Uh, it's not hey. a muffin top. It's <laughs> love <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. But uh, anyway, hoping to hit um, at least like two ninety five. I think bench. I think is in the books because I got. I mean, like another eight to nine months. So hopefully that's there. And then squat wise. Um, most I've ever done is 365 for two, and that was like two years ago, and that was with a belt, and I was like 190. So hopefully this time around I can be like 190. He's and geared up, man. You got to go all natural, I know, man. I know. Get, get, get the Flintstone gummies yeah, and get that, that I know. belt, man. I had to take my BCAs, just get yeah. jacked. Say your, um, or, yeah, say your prayers, man. Yeah. And then uh, I actually stopped doing deadlifts, so like front squats are now like my uh, other leg days kind of compound. So we'll see how much I can work those up. Maybe a 315 is in the books, but. Uh, I don't know. That's as far as strength goals. Size, it's hard to know how much or what I'll look as like. As big as possible. Yeah, as big as possible. <laughs> might get as big. Always. Might not get yeah. big, but we're ready. <laughs> we'll, see we're ready we'll see what happens. Look at the beam I sent you. Yeah. Going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We're ready for any uh, any progress, though. Yeah. <laughs> anything. Yeah, true. What about you, Griff? You doing anything? Um, you just fucking riding the boat? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would say, so it's kind of like a continuation, but... For the past few years, I had dropped down and kind of like lost a lot of size, lost a lot of strength. So this past year, it was mostly kind of getting back into a good mindset and kind of more so consistency. And so this year, I think I want to just continue to hold 200 or so. Right now, I'm like 196-ish, but continue to hold 200 uh, because it's hard for me to really 
eat during the day. Uh, if I have a big meal, I'll get really sleepy. You need and shakes, then, bro. Yeah. <laughs> shakes. Uh, yeah, I need real food. Uh, <laughs> Shake time. But the other thing I would say, which I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just kind of after a while when I feel like I've just been tracking, you know, rep sets, other things like that. I've been trying to mo- focus a little bit more so on kind of the non-essential stuff so i bought an alarm clock to like have a regular wake up time uh because usually i'll just keep so my phone by oh, my okay. bedside so your phone doesn't have an alarm alarms <laughs> and then like turn them off fall asleep yeah. one by one and That's it's actually cool. funny i was gonna tell you brock because i set it to five but now i find that like pretty much a weekend i naturally just wake up at like 4 45 4 55 because it's weird that you kind of just expect it to go off. So now yeah. I just kind of naturally wake up. I feel good. I turn it off before it even gets on to where like before a lot of times um, with my phone, I'd be like, oh, you know, like it's technically like 10 o'clock. So like I could wake up at like 630 tomorrow instead of five. So then I would just set that one to where yeah. now that I have like an actual alarm clock, it's harder to change the time because it's just one time every day. So it's like, no, I'll go to bed now and stuff like that. So I'm trying to just be more consistent with the sleep and then a little bit more. So, um, two things, one is going to be more so like mobility work and some like actual warm up stuff, not just like two warm up sets and then throw my like working weight on the bar oh, pretty yeah. much all day. Um, Eat. so I've been watching a lot of like Chris stuff and videos or other things like that. As far as just, you know, when we were at the nut bash, I feel like I learned a lot from Dude's him as far as just smart, man. kind of the hierarchy of yeah, yeah, bracing and yeah. other things like that. And then the other thing I would say is, um, especially for me, um, I feel like going through college, my attention span has just been like completely shot to where I used to like read all the time. I would read like the Arnold encyclopedia or the other things. And especially just getting into lifting just was really passionate about like, Oh, watching this YouTube video to try to like learn this, this and this. And I feel like kind of as I've gone through college and we just learn or read textbooks for the most part, a lot of times I feel like my attention span is only for social media <laughs> to where like I'll read a paragraph and be like, uh, let me see what's on Instagram or Dude, like other so things easy. like that. So I want to just make sure I set aside time to actually like start learning again and actually just feel like I'm, I don't know, learning for me and not for like the next exam, if that makes sense. So that's one thing I, I kind of want to focus on is just kind of going down some other paths as far as education of lifting and, and bodybuilding and other things like that. But maybe more so kind of for fun and not for like a, a, a test or something like that coming up. Yeah. If that makes sense. Some like no pressure type deal. Yeah. Or more so like maybe even like a psychological side or, you know, like that's, that's something that was in the Arnold encyclopedia yeah. too. It's just certain mentality things, certain habits, other things like I th- that. I feel, I feel like if you're always putting too. it in your mind, at least you're thinking about it. It's always like naturally back there. At least, True. You know? So true. That's a good, point. that's for me. I have zero goals. I have been tracking consistently though for like, eight months macro or not macro wise calorie wise because i wanted to get my calories back up uh to where they should be for a while i was eating like way under 3,000 calories probably like 2,200 calories a day and uh i was just like soft kind of small and i was like oh man i need to bump those numbers up those rookie numbers yeah, rookie, yeah. <laughs> and uh slowly bumped them up over time like a few months and got them up to, i'm right I'm, I'm i'm still cruising at 3500 i feel like i should still go ahead and start bumping them up but just a little bit more um not too much more but i've, I've been feeling good around 3500 haven't been feeling like sore or like starving or anything like that at the end of the day i definitely could probably still eat a little bit more but i'm, I'm satisfied i'm not full or anything but that's the main goal is me just tracking every day me- weighing out measuring shit because for years i just never did it yeah. I feel like people like act like it's like the hardest thing ever, but I mean, if you have my fitness no. pal, so quick, it's all saved yeah. in. Like, what if you eat somewhat consistently, which you probably should be eating? True. Like, it's easy to add it quickly. Like, I've got to brag. I think my date, my my streak I've is been like, oh, like six for years. seven thousand no. days. Yeah. <laughs> even if you're out of town. Yeah, since Dang. let's see, what is the streak? Summer reader. One thousand. Summer reader. <laughs> One thousand seven hundred ninety-five days. I kind of want to like. So how many years? Shut off your Wi-Fi no. tomorrow. You know, one thing, the Bible, dude. Yeah. 
<laughs> Wait, 365? Yeah, I'm like a few five days from five years. years which, oh, um, crap. I didn't know the app was around in five years. I haven't the been first no, I thought I was sweet, like so I was like looking up on the form. I was like, what's like the longest person streak? And it was like 20 people on this one form that were like 2,000 or 3,000. And I was like, shit. Damn, I was like, damn, I'm not that cool. They should at but, least um, give you the. No, full one day blow. I was at one day I was at work <laughs> and I was like panicking. I was like, no, I mixed the day. And this was like when I had like a thousand or something or nine hundred. I was like, no. You went and then, back, but huh? You can go back and track it. No, though, that right? wasn't how I fixed oh, okay. it. I just like tracked like that morning, and I guess it wasn't a full 24 hours or something, and uh, so it gave it to me. And oh I was like, God. yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I can't waste nine hundred days. I hate I those like, Google how to hack it, like the Snapchat oh, I gave up and stuff Snapchat. too. Like, I just hate feeling like I have to be a camera All right, boy real, real question, stuff. real question, y'all. Who uses Snapchat? Be honest. Uh, it? All right. The only reason <laughs> anyone uses Deep Snapchat Deep right now, <laughs> the only reason I ever use Snapchat and where most people use Snapchat is if you're trying to get some. Otherwise, what are you sending a selfie of your face to your boys for? <laughs> you yeah, know? that's a good Instagram point. Instagram does it all. Those are just so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Instagram yeah. does it all. There's no all. reason to use Snapchat at this point unless you just like the filters you or you're trying to location. hit up someone. Yeah, <laughs> and, who, and who's their favorites? Who's favorites and shit? They you know? removed that actually. They, they I think it was it. That was years ago. Yes. They used to get you in trouble. That, like, I think Christy, back when I was working with her, she was Snapchat me a lot. And she's like, "Why is Christy your number one?" Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, abort, abort. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that app. Yeah. Every time I go on it, though, it's just like, oh, this is such like bottom of the barrel. It's like when you're in the checkout line and you got like the National Enquirer on oh, the side. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I am surprised that that's, that app is still around. I'm, I'm not going right, to lie. And get, so, I mentioned a while back, and Jake and my whole family didn't believe me. There's Snapchat Premium, right? Isn't that a thing? Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's pretty much like fans oh, yeah, only. Yeah, yeah. only yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. that, I think, is like something that's just by the person that's doing it to where like i would have a specific snapchat oh. and then if if you pay me i just give you the username oh okay so it's not an actual sense. like app like it's no, not an upgrade no, no, no. okay yeah. gotcha but well, then okay i understand same concept though, yeah. but yeah do y'all only. know anyone who has an only fan no i'm i might start one though <laughs> masquerade mask and everything dude yeah that's true. little kai green grapefruit yeah, action. You could <laughs> Whatever you want, man. If you're paying, I accept, dude. Put my feet on this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm selling it all for real. <laughs> Sounds are tight here at Jim Flo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, I haven't had Snapchat in years. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't I haven't uh, tracked a calorie in quite a few months. <laughs> uh, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> well, we ain't skipping the calories. Just ain't tracking. You're just uh, it's hibernation. You're about to come out of hibernation. Did a lot of drinking. A lot of a lot of eating. <laughs> Too many natter days. Yeah, a lot of natter days. <laughs> Which, by the way, it's almost natter day season coming uh, soon. I pass them in the store all the time, but it's so good. Yeah, we were just talking, me and Jake, the other day because the nut bash. Which, by the way, I wanted oh, to bring yeah. that up to y'all. They just sent out the agreements. The nutrition corners just sent those out for us to sign and like agree to some whatever stipulations they have. But anyways, it's coming soon. I think it's in the middle of June. The weekend event again. We definitely want to get a place for everybody to be able to stay at, and. Uh, <laughs> We like, Where's it at this year? Uh, Oceana. Oceana. So again, same yeah. yeah. And uh, we were like, man, what can we do to like have more fun at this one? Well, f- what, first thing, Natter-day. packing a cooler Natter Day <laughs> at, the, at, the, uh, at the, the booth event, the little expo event. I might be frowned upon. We might have to solo cup it. Yeah, I think we might have to hide it. But, but n- a nice, refreshing Natter Day. You know, it's always Behind sunny, table, nice out. Might dude. loosen you up, talk to a few people. Might do something dumb. Whatever. <laughs> That's a good point. Whatever. Point. Might, get get banned banned might never get invited <laughs> again. If word spreads, you might be the popular booth at the expo. It's on the DL, for sure. Depending. <laughs> We're selling product. <laughs> yeah. Was that big dude next to us last year, Steve? Steve. 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 Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe toss him a couple of days. Yeah. He needs one. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's true. I wonder sometimes, too, when you get that big, like, does your tolerance go up? I don't know. I feel I feel like I heard stories where people because they just haven't drank for, forever that they would get fucked up off of like one beer or like a couple shots or whatever. You well, know? I was actually because I've been having to do this driver improvement course, but the uh, there's a section on alcohol and it says that um, basically depending on what age and weight you are, kind of that ratio determines how many drinks will raise your blood alcohol content to a certain level. 
And so I was actually kind of surprised because I think for like, for me, like 25, 200 pounds, it takes like 13 or 14 drinks to get to like where it's like dangerous, if that makes okay, sense. Okay, I was going to say, so, before I can't drive. Yeah, but I will say, because like, I don't really drink that much, probably like three, four times a year, if that, but it is funny sometimes I'll go so long and then like, I'll have like one or like a, a you glass ready to of fight wine or something like that. And it's like... Man, I'm like, <laughs> I'm feeling it. Yeah, it's interesting just to see like how that tolerance dips. I don't know how people do it every week. It's crazy. I, that can't afford it, and just like yeah. feeling feeling shit for two days, three days after it, you know, True. and then you know it doesn't think, definitely doesn't help your physique when you do it all the time. It, it doesn't. Well, I guess you're, bad, you're used you're know, used like, to it. I don't yeah. go hard. I got to drink. <laughs> Can't get hung over if you don't stop drinking. That's right. <laughs> now I went pretty not not too hard Saturday night, and I did move off the couch Sunday. But I mean, I I don't go hard like that very good. often. You know, I was drinking some random IPAs or some some crap beers uh, down at the circuit mall. Yeah. But yeah, no, I know Brock. He gets wasted all the time, man. <laughs> yeah, all that underage chocolate drinking. Wasted. <laughs> chocolate <Yeah>. wasted. Chocolate <laughs> wasted. <laughs> Got my Capri Suns on deck. Yeah. Yeah. Shotgun that bad boy. Maybe a little high C. But yeah, what, what do y'all think we could do this this year for the Nut Bash? Like something different. I'm trying to think. Because how do you, you think the wheel went over last year? So I was thinking our table last year was very cluttered and busy. As in like we just had way too much on our table. Like True. the hats, the bags, the shirts, whatever. I want to just do like focus on maybe just one cool thing that we could pop off for it. And be like a giveaway or just like. Every every order Jim Flow purchase at that event gets it type deal, and it'd just be like something basic, but something everybody would still like, though. True, that's a good point. Uh, you kind of put me on the spot, so I don't really have anything. But I will say, <laughs> maybe this will give some ideas. As I know, it like my high school back in the day, back in, you know, ten months ago <laughs> now. <laughs> um, but no, the uh, the like Marine Corps or something, uh, some one of the military <laughs> branches. Yeah, they pull yeah. The, they bring the pull up bar. Yeah, yeah. and um. I don't know if we if we'd have one to rent one, or I don't know if that's a good idea, but yeah. I don't know. Off yeah. the, I we guess off one of those. So if anybody's things. watching this, they aren't copying or doing what we want to do. We can definitely talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> <Not> that <laughs> <laughs> we may or may not be doing we the pull-up bar. Pull bar. <laughs> if we see you with the pull-up bar, we're breaking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the five viewers out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I've been getting I've been getting those numbers up, dude. I think Maddie and I still got the number dude, one. No, we I hold saw, that I, close. I, 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 I do go look back at every now and then. I'm like, man, what did he do to like? He must have shouted it out a couple times, a bunch, and because I only posted about it once. And I was like, damn, why is that one getting so many more views? Just because it's got a girl. That's that what it is. Yeah. Really easy, yeah. it's like the shittiest one of them all. Yeah, I know you can't <laughs> you can't even hear us, and I'm like, damn it, because I feel like we have good conversations. Angled yeah. downhill. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're growing. I'm growing up. But uh, yeah, no, that'll be fun. I mean, what what do y'all think we could do outside of that? Like, we definitely, I would definitely want to get like a house. You want to of... throw a party? That I want to throw a party that not like a rager, but like <laughs> try and get everybody. Yeah, like, it'd be an open door. Anybody and everybody, brand whatever, just come yeah, over and just be everybody have a good time. Have a few drinks if you want to. Smoke some cigars, whatever people like to do. Pre-workout shots. Pre -workout. BCA pong. <laughs> That's what I did. Yeah. Did, did you... I ever show you that? On my 21st birthday, I made an Instagram Weak. video, that and was I was good. I did pre workout shots, a oh, BCAA yeah. bong, and then shotgunned uh, one of those protein, shake. protein yeah. shakes. Yeah, oh, Jesus. good times. Yeah. Uh, Just in my pajamas, filming myself in my garage <laughs> <laughs> by yourself. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Yep. Nice uh, rager. Good time. Griffin doesn't always post stories. When he does, they're good. Yeah. <laughs> they are. You, I try you to save them. I try to only... save some good ones. Yeah. I like the one where he's just like cold and, and like out in the wilderness or something. He's like, just you know, bro or, or boiling my water here, just making this for me and Buddha. You know, just trying to get back, yeah. like trying to find a spot to camp. You know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I try not to, because you know, I feel like when you, at least for me, like when I used to maybe want to get more popular on instagram you kind of want to think about having something to post every day but you know after a while i feel like okay well i only want to show what's like interesting to me or other yeah. things like that i felt the same way when i tried to do youtube more regularly it's like okay i'm just saying i'm going to work i'm going to the gym this is what i'm eating i felt like it's just well, not you, that exciting you almost think so. of like 
do I have an extremely boring life or is everyone else just like <laughs> is everyone else just like maximizing the like small points of like interesting in their life you know I, I like think people are cool. able to re- relay yeah relay right like yeah, yeah relay. relay like something so simple and make it blow it up to make it look like it's a big thing like True. I watched a few with influencers and like I'm like man what why is every day so jam packed? But some of their just normal shit that probably isn't that cool in person, they like make it. Yeah, dramatic. they shoot like five minutes of them walking out of the it's door and be rolling. Yeah. Like, Damn, their yeah. life is awesome, but they're not, not doing anything yeah. much True. cooler than what we're doing. And I think the thing you forget sometimes is like a, a day video could technically be like three days. Yeah, or something. sometimes. Like that. Yeah. And that's the way I. Uh, my last video was like a month and a half. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, Maddie and I were watching it and we we're like, I remember that. Wait, that's what was happening. Like we were like watching yeah. it back, and it was like the memories. You know, I, I, I might as well just film for a year and just put it all together. Yeah, <laughs> Rip Van Winkle. Yeah, that's funny. yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I want to definitely do something cool for this year's Nut Bash. So keep that in mind yeah. if y'all, uh, you guys, want to think about something. True. Mm-hmm. And I, I was gonna say, something. well, I was, I was just thinking about like speaking of kind of having a consistent output since pretty much all of you guys have some sort of job related to social media as an advertisement. Yeah. How uh, how hard do you feel like it is to kind of turn off that switch to where, like, I know when I text Brock, like, he texts me back within, like, 30 seconds usually at any time <laughs> of the day. To where, like, I'm a fast responder. How, Are you just sitting there? No just shame. Like, yeah, like, no shame. Yes, he texted back. Go, 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 go. Yeah. So, like, how hard is that to kind of set limits for and then also like you're going to hawaii yeah how hard is that for you to not wake up and want to check your email not be out on the beach and want to just see like if somebody's had an order inquiry or something like so, that so i guess for me since you asked me last i went like when i went to cuba or i run the show yeah so <laughs> i pretty much i know jake will at least get the not the not to say it in a bad way, not in a derogatory, <laughs> like the bare minimum. Like he'll make sure things are getting done. Like, yeah, like right. orders will get out and stuff like that. But I do wonder, and I'm like, man, I wish you know something could either get posted or you know, I hope orders are getting out at least same day because that's what I, I for some reason I've just built that into myself to where like I kill myself if I don't. And mentally, like I'm like, man, I wish that got out today. You know, even if it is just one order, I think it just matters. But. uh Fortunately, when I do go I on vacation, for example, to Hawaii, I'm probably going to be drinking quite a bit, so I might not think. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and Somebody put that out there. One yeah, star so. of you. Fuck you. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's maybe like talking during like the regular day, like my Monday through Friday days. Like I don't know. Most of the time, by the time I get home, I'm able to shut off. I got my cats and my wife, Sarah, and I'm just usually chilled by then i think sometimes i might hit jacob on my voice message i voice message everybody god yeah. jesus Dude, oh, that is, is, oh my god yeah. that is the like, way yo, just he voice messages me. everybody yeah. yeah yo what's up i didn't even listen to the one today and the yeah. funny thing is i feel like too for me usually like if i'm training somebody i just have to keep my phone in my pocket and then i'm like oh like a, that's a voice another message. voice and message, message, yeah. like, I have to listen to that when I get home, and, and then I home, yeah, I've, yeah. I've already opened the yeah. message, so yeah. I've forgotten about it because it's not. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm like yeah, how many, how many messages, yeah, yeah. Sixty yeah. Yeah. messages yeah. now. Yeah. I just yeah. well, I don't know how you guys do it because like broccoli archives all of his emails we already went over this but his inbox is completely empty on his email and that yeah. kind of bugs me more than somebody that doesn't that has 60 uh so 60 unread messages to, to go on to what you're talking about i'm such a damn workaholic. like i have like a problem like i i had set aside like the last two hours of my day to like you know give maddie attention watch netflix like just relax yeah. like that's i give i give myself that time but from like waking at like 5 a.m on like I I don't really get anxious in life or nervous with like stress with like a lot of things. What I do get anxious is if I can't like answer email quick enough or I get you know, like I do a lot of freelance video work and like if I don't get X video done, like here's what I was telling Maddie I do a really bad job of is like I'll have a I'll have like a bigger job due. Like let's say I got these four videos due for this one person like today, okay, like eight PM or something. But then I, I just got a new email from this other person. They just have one video. Well, I'll do that one really uh, quick because it's quick. It's easy. I want to get it out the way so I don't have to think, to about, think it. about it later. Yep. Otherwise, it just sits on like it just, you know, it just it, sits it on me. It weighs on me. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like such a workaholic. I have to get it done. 
And then another thing, kind of going back to what you were saying about the same day order stuff, is like you have this like pressure you put on yourself or these like standards that if like you don't meet these standards or like you know if I if I do an Instagram video and I'm like you know either the thumbnail's stupid or something slightly out of focus or the angle's weird like you know the average person might not notice it or they'll be like or Maddie will say like it's not a big deal like no one's gonna like hate you because of it and I'm like no it's gotta be right so I gotta re-record it like we're, we're re-recording this right now and um it, it kind of like I don't know it pisses her off sometimes but it also like again it's like I don't know. It's like what you said. It's hard to like turn it off sometimes if like you are that kind of person that is uh, very demanding on yourself and kind of a uh, yeah. workaholic in that sense. I get you know? that way too with a lot of things too. And I think it's just kind of, I would call it like selective OCD because I'm Mind not selective. the kind of like, yeah. I don't compulsively yeah. wash my hands. I don't like count a certain number of steps, but certain things like if I'm editing a video or something like that, then I'm like, this is slightly more yellow than this clip, like, and then I have to, like, perfectly balance it, or, like, this went a second too far, or something like that, to where I just get, like, neurotic about it for some reason. Yeah. Um, but I was gonna ask you guys, too, kind of going off of that, since you said you're a workaholic, where did you develop that from? Because especially since you just turned 20, like... I just feel like that's a very rare. It does blow me away. Oh, I have, a, I have an easy like answer for that. Anymore. Did you guys build that up over time? Because you're the same way, Austin. But is that something that was kind of Recently. learned that you had to kind of work yourself into, or is that something that you've always uh, had, or no, kind of just develop? More? Not at all. I was. I've, I still consider myself very lazy in some aspects of my life. Yes, yeah, Sarah. I'm lazy as fuck. When I get home, when I get home like I am not like, compulsive. Cut that, cut that out. I am yeah. not compulsive about doing like house shit. I'll do it. If she tells me like three times, but when it comes to gym flow, I do like obsess about it a little bit and I, I have a lot of urgency for some things that might not need it, but like I try and just like, I don't know, like get into Brock, like some things in particular, like I'm like, I got to do it now. I got to do an hour. I need to figure out who can do it now or what it's, it's something that has to get done or I'll think about it or it'll, it'll like steep. Yeah. It just lingers on your mind and, and like the like, longer you don't get to it. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I think that happened over the past probably two years because it hasn't always been that way with gym flow it hasn't but um yeah probably the past two years i don't know what clip and just somehow well, i i would i think i would but i've been saying i guess the, like the last two three years like if, if it didn't have to do with gym flow or him eating it it's, ain't getting getting done. Done. <laughs> it's not getting done <laughs> that's pretty much how it's how it's been like it, if it says lifting lifting eating or gym flow like if it's not those three things it it's not Austin. That's funny. Yeah, I feel like it's like the same one. Like I think it just when you have like a goal in mind, it kind of just I don't know. When you're really passionate about something, it's kind of that simple. It's like you don't really have to think about um, getting the work done. And like mine was definitely like a progression too. But I feel like there's Brock before lifting and then there's Brock like after lifting. True. Because like before, I feel like I was lazy. I wasn't driven. Didn't have goals. Granted, you're a young kid. Like you don't you know when you're like 14, like you don't have like a vision for your life necessarily. But it's like. Once you start lifting, and I feel like the people that are in, like, the fitness community, as long as you're not following a bunch of, like, gym sharks or phonies, like, you get, like, more hardcore mentality people. You and, can. you know, the first time you hear it, it might just be motivation. The second time you hear it, you know, you're fired up for the gym. But, like, after years and years of hearing those same kind of, like, hardcore messages of hard work, discipline, no one cares, um, you know, it's all, it's all on you. It's like you kind of, like, build that mentality. And then the other thing is, like, shout out to... My dad, like, he's, like, an ultimate workaholic. I don't know if you guys my have fathers like, like this to where it's, like... Have he, you met him yet? My dad, Did he come no. to the party in the gym or is that Maddie's dad? No, that was Maddie's dad. Big, big D, what's his yeah, name, Mad Dog? Jimmy, his D's, Diesel dad on Diesel his dad. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mad Dog, Jimmy. Diesel But anyway, dad. but no, my dad, uh, he's just such a damn hard worker. Like, he will not give himself um, any break at all on, like, the day. Like, the dude works the typical 9 to 5, you know, sometimes 6 p.m., like, done this his whole life. And then immediately as, as he gets home, he'll eat, like, a sub, goes right to, like, umpire, like, you know, a couple games a week baseball. Like, that's another two hours at his night. And then comes home, sleeps. And by the way, he gets up at, like, 4 a.m. to go work out or, like, do whatever class. Yeah. And then on the weekends, he's working six, eight-hour shifts at something else. Just, like, grind. Absolutely, like, grind. Like, he makes me feel like I don't work hard enough. My dad is like that, Yeah, too. and he just goes ball to the wall. And he's always been this way. Um, and I guess, you know, you don't realize you're growing up. And then especially, like, now when I'm older. I mean, dude just turned 50. I mean, he's still just, like, he, he doesn't know what to do when he gets free time. Like, I'll actually, like, tell him, like, oh, you want to do this? And he's like, nope, 
got yard work to do. You know, <laughs> it's like My it shit. just goes hard. Right, thanks. Yeah. I'm a dick now. And yeah. I, I just feel like uh, it just is like ingrained in me to just work hard. And I think it's a pro con that like when I do that when I have done like hard work or good things in the past like growing up like I don't really get like a pat on the back or like I'm doing all this extra freelance work you know like you guys talk about or hype me up in some way in school and I don't think of it as doing anything like too extra because it's like it's almost like he doesn't give me too much acknowledgement or pat on the back and it's not like a sob story it's like I'm not like crying about it but Hard it's like, me. but I feel like that almost <laughs> makes me just kind of work harder and expect that out of myself. And it goes back to like, you know, that's how I became like this kind of workaholic to where I'm like obsessive with it because I expect nothing less of myself. Because mm-hmm. if I do, like, I have this problem where if I get any free time, I feel like I'm being lazy. Me too. Like, if I go on Instagram, I'm like, what the frick am I? Like, what? I'm just wasting time. So I get like annoyed if I have anything more than those two hours I set aside at like night to just hang out. If I start like slacking off, I get pissed off with myself because I feel like I'm wasting time. True. My dad is like that too, to where like four or five hours of sleep is like his natural. Uh, what what's that cycle? But REM. um, yeah, that's his like natural REM cycle. And uh, I used to, as a kid, like before I went to school, I would set my alarm so that I could like go run outside and like feed the dog with him before he left for work at like five thirty in the morning or other mm-hmm. things like that. And He's always worked, like, 60 hours a week or so. And it's funny to me because, like, one thing that uh, he's always kind of go, go, go to where, like, he he works his job and then he has, like, a a house he's renovating on the side to, like, be able to flip. And then he's got, like, one or two other things. And something that uh, that was funny to me is just, like, I think about now that I get home sometimes, it's, like, all I can do to, like, half microwave uh, something to eat and then sit on the couch and like barely even finish the plate before I'm ready to go to bed and I just think about like when when I was a kid he would come home and like cook us dinner and play basketball with us outside and then like tuck us into bed or other things like that and it's like how I don't know I just don't know how that was possible different breed like some older guys I don't know I'm not saying like they don't make them like that our age is a bunch of lazies (laughs) but and I heard this saying, or I saw it in a meme, and I was like, damn, that's kind of true. It's like hard times build tough dudes, and soft times build weak dudes, you know? It's like true. When, when you grow up, and you're like... So each generation is going to have a soft... Like, every other generation is going to have a soft one, because the one that had to work hard to build it yeah, is tough, but then the other, they're going to yeah. treat their kids and overcoddle them, and they're going to yeah. be weak, and then those ones are going to have... You know, it's like true. it cycles kind of deal. Yeah, we're in like a down period down. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. where to low. Stocks are down. Estrogen's a little high. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, too much soy. Yeah. Um, that's the thing I feel like too is is for me like that was kind of the standard to where I feel like that's kind of I don't know not what to expect but like you know that's kind of what you're used to growing up. But on the same token, I feel like uh, for for me seeing him as a kid like he didn't really have any hobbies. He didn't really have any interests or anything like that outside of work. So for me, like I try to make that still a priority and like schedule in time to like, Oh, you know, like practice something or yeah. like have a, a hobby or something like that. That is a means of investing your, your time. Cause I feel like that is some sort of release too. Cause I feel like if you don't have that and like, I'm not a big TV watcher or anything like that yeah. either. So like if I can just play guitar or something like that for like an hour in the evening, it's a good way to unwind. And I feel like it's like, a separate thing to put your mind towards that's not just work 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 all the time i, I don't too. know if it's a bad thing but i like i get up early in the morning i get up at five i don't i don't mean i'm gonna work till 7 30 yeah. <clears throat> but um it's like i have to have my morning like to just sit there and play the guitar watch the news drink my coffee yeah i don't know if i'm an old man now or what but <laughs> well that's like your zen though like, yeah but i have to i have to do it at night too like i i got it's like i have to have yeah both ends of the spectrum lazy, but like i get I mean, I'll, sometimes I get on my computer and do like gym, like, send out emails or do some QuickBooks stuff. But uh, a lot of times, like I, I like my mornings for relaxing. True. And my in my night my, when I come home from the gym, I'm spent and. True. I normally make dinner after I go to the store, and that's that's about it. Like I don't I don't mind sitting down and binge watching Breaking Bad for the third time. Did would, y'all hit on any? And I missed this because I was taking a pee pee. But uh, did y'all hit on how like? My, at least for me, my mornings are the most productive hours, but I'm usually working, training, and then by the time I'm done with that, my, my brain's kind of foggy a little bit. True. On days that I used to not train every single day in the morning, I would get a lot more done during like that 
the like nine to about twelve, and after twelve, my my mental capacity slowly goes away. <laughs> yeah, and nice by stop. like yeah, yeah. yeah, and by like five thirty. If I'm still here, I'm worthless. I'm just staring at the computer screen. I feel like the biggest thing you can do to be productive is like getting up early. Like, and it's yeah. not even yeah. like get up at four thirty so you can post it on Instagram Jocko. and say you did it. Yeah, yeah, Jocko. Oh, dude, grind now. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. but it's like, <laughs> but I mean, I I don't know what it is. I'm sure there's like science to it, but like you just wake up. And especially if you just get your cup of coffee or whatever, like you're zoned in, like you can just be so much more productive. And I think it's just a matter of like your mindset, but like you start off the day, like this is the beginning of everything. So you're like focused in, but then if like, if it's, if I don't get people that stay up late because then if you're like, to me, anything 9 PM and after I'm not being productive. Like I'm lazy. I'm ready for bed. Like, Papa. I mean, <laughs> I get that I mean when, when, when's the last time anyone did anything work or productive wise past did, 9 p.m. that wasn't socializing? <laughs> that wasn't socializing or anything or sweet lovings or anything. <laughs> that's yeah. that's not uh, nah. I feel like that too because, like, on the weekends, I like to have like pretty much everything I want to have done done by noon because I feel like once it gets to noon it's like what it's already noon like the day is going yeah. away and it's funny because like when I've in the past like been dating or in relationships or something like that and you know like I usually wake up naturally at like six at the latest and like if I'm with a girl that's like she gets up at 10 I just feel like I'm just like Ah, uh, like, dude, yeah. what am I supposed to do? And then, there, like, they <laughs> then they're just like, oh, well, nothing. let's just be lazy and like, we'll, we'll order breakfast. And it's like, it's noon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not eating breakfast at noon. So I feel like I kind of get like, I don't know. I It's hard to find that kind of balance. I'll say, I'll yeah. say briefly on Maddie. I'll let you guys kind of say what you do. It's like, so I wake up at five. Maddie's alarm goes off around five or five thirty. And then... I'm making coffee at like five. I bring it to her about like five fifteen. I kind of nudge her, give her a little like, "All right, let's, let's, let's wake up now. It's about time." <laughs> and then it takes about like another twenty minutes. I've finished my coffee, breakfast, or whatever. Give her a little nudge. I'm like, "All right, we gotta get ready for the gym." And so then it's like five forty, five thirty-five. Then she's gotten up. All right, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> go. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. But what if we're hitting like like if we're working out, like she'll definitely get up enough time that she can eat her oatmeal and like work out. But especially if like you said, like if it's just like a lazier day, like. I don't know, you just gotta like use that extra hour in the morning to just get your work done. Like if I know I got stuff to do, I'll let her sleep in. You know, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna just enjoy your sleep. You know, and I'll, you know, I get to it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. How long? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm definitely up before Sarah on the weekends. During the weekday, Sarah is either up at the same time because she wakes up at five, and I'm usually up. Depends on what day it is. Sometimes I'm in the gym by five, but um, regardless most days we're up at the same day or same time during the week but on the weekend she's she's the type that sleeps until about 10 10 30 and i'm up at like 7 30 or 8 at the latest because i just i'm so triggered to like wake up at, during the week like you were mentioning earlier just like clockwork it's like fuck if i just sit there in bed i'm like staring <laughs> at the ceiling yeah well, I'm just, and i'll and sometimes i'll just get up still at 7 30 i'll just go to the couch, move to the couch but I, and I, I feel better about it yeah. i'll drink yeah. coffee <laughs> and then i might pass back out for another half hour on the couch but at least i got up you know so yeah, i do i do feel, feel better. better yeah i do feel better if i just get up but yeah what were you about to say before i know oh, i was gonna say um <laughs> and i don't know if you experienced this with tatiana too jake but like how long did you guys date before you moved in together? And then did your lifestyles kind of, did they align well? Or was there a hump that you had to get over it with anything? We don't live together. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying too, like even with the sleeping uh, over too, because like well, that's the thing sometimes it's like, that's a big stay the night a few. She doesn't stay the night very often because she's uh, got her. Just son. order an Uber. I've got a one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a one bedroom house and there's not a whole lot of room and she's got a, you know, six year old. So I'm like, I would feel bad making him sleep on the couch every night. True. And I'm not going to set up another bed in my bedroom. Like a little cat, a cat bed. Like a little <laughs> cat in the bed. corner. <laughs> the Donnie is small, but not that small. So, uh, no, yeah. So we didn't, she's, uh, she uh, likes to get up with me when I make coffee and whatnot. Yeah. Have you ever lived with so any tricks, been, Griffin? Have you ever serious. had like a girlfriend that you actually like moved in with or like maybe share, or she like stayed for a little longer than a night or a two? A real one? A real one? What does that mean? <laughs> uh, well, you don't count my dog. Um, <laughs> I got Pamela and Fistina right here. <laughs> no, I will say, like, well, 
the last more so serious relationship I was in, um, I pretty much stayed over usually five or six nights a week just because I don't know. I, I, I don't know if you guys get into this too, but like sometimes I feel like I, maybe it's because my parents got divorced. Like I feel like I just try to avoid conflict. So I usually just find myself agreeing, saying yes, being like, okay, sure. Sort of thing. Like I'm easy to get along with, but it was one of those things that was some somewhat of a point of contention because I would stay over there five, six nights a week. And then when I would try to be like, okay, well, I'm going to stay at my place. Then it would always be like a meltdown. Um, and so after a po- certain point And you wouldn't time, invite back to no, your No, I place. would. Okay. But it just... Oh, it was a one-way uh, road. Well, it was one of those things that... Oh, it's too bright in your apartment, so I got room darkening shades, and I was paying double rent for a while because the old apartment wasn't nice enough. How ugly enough. were they that they needed dim and, lights? And <laughs> I want you to look at me. It was too much road noise, so I got like a white noise machine and yada, yada, yada. You can see kind of the... Oh, wow. And then at a certain point, it, after all that, it was, well, I just don't sleep well in other people's beds. And so then it's like... Okay, well, <laughs> I'm just going to have some nights where I sleep in my bed because, I, you know, I have a dog, I'm in school, I have to prep my food and stuff like that. And so then it was, what? You don't want to stay over here? And so after a certain point in time, I just sat down with my dad and I was like, you know, like, this seems to be an issue that keeps arising. And we only live like five minutes away from each other. Yeah. And I was like, so maybe if we move in, like this kind of stuff will be solved. And he was like, that's the last thing you want to do. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you're already yeah, having issues, yeah. then you do not want to be moving in with this person. So after a certain point in time, it kind of like planted a seed to where then I started like noticing other things to where I was like, you know, hmm. like, <laughs> is more closeness going to be the fixer of this or should... Should things go their separate ways? And it wound up going that way. And yeah. I don't know. Sometimes looking back, it's like, God, how did you let that go on for so long? But, <laughs> yeah, dude. You know, it is what it is. But how about you, Brock? How long did you guys stay before you lived together? And then was there so, anything you had to get over as far as, like, lifestyle compatibility? You know, I always feel like Manny and I are a bad example just because I feel like we clicked so well. So early. like the first time we were on the podcast, we said that we started dating, like, two and a half weeks after we met each other, which sounds, like, kind of crazy. But, um, you know, like... Like almost like three years strong, we're uh, you know doing almost great. As like, good as your my fitness pal. I know, I know. <laughs> we, we know what's what's uh, what's lasted longer. But um, anyway, but uh, no, like uh, I guess wait, cause she moved into her first. She was at a dorm like our first year of dating, um, her first year, and I was finishing up senior year in high school. And then, um, I guess like a year and a half into dating, she moved into an apartment with uh, her roommate. And from that year, this was like my first year in college, so a year ago, um, I stayed over, I believe, I was just thinking about this the other day, like four nights a week. Yeah. And um, again, it wasn't my apartment. I wasn't paying rent. And uh, But yeah, I was over about four nights a week. It was convenient because A, I had a client that was like 6 a.m. So I'd basically stay over those nights so that in the morning I could just go straight to the gym. Um, it was closer to campus instead of me driving like 25 minutes in the morning. Um, and it's like you really, you know, I feel like the move in portion or sleeping with somebody for more than sleeping over at someone's house for more than like, you know, a few days or something, um, or once or twice, like you get a feel for like how they are and their habits or, you know, their, their hygiene, all these like things. And you kind of learn quickly, like how it's going to work, you know? And, um, you either, like you said, like you try to make, uh, excuses or make, uh, make compromises that maybe are a little bit more than you probably should be doing. Um, but it was, it was super smooth for Maddie and I, like, over like the summer we had already spent um nights with each other at either her parents or my parents um pretty frequently and then um again once she had her apartment it was like four nights a week throughout the whole year and then we moved in together i guess like two and a half years of dating or about two years and um you know we're about to move into another apartment it's been like a breeze this whole time we we i mean you gotta learn quickly like how are you splitting like the bills or how are you like i'm again communicating differences and opinions or issues and stuff but like we haven't had like any legitimate arguments like that have been serious that's why i feel like we're a bad example like we've never had a fight that's lasted longer than like a few hours um and it's never been over anything like serious it's been like over really stupid stuff so. it's weird with me i had my client literally today ask me he's like so how did you, you know, he asked how we met me and my wife now and uh all this stuff and i was like we really really aren't the greatest example because i am very very laid back like very laid back and she's very independent and I am too, 
I like to do my own shit by myself, and I can do it with or without her, and she can definitely do anything without me. And I don't care. She doesn't care. And we all have, we both have our own separate goals. And like, we literally, and I was telling him, I was like, we've never argued. Like, <laughs> as if, if arguments like, who's going to take out the trash type deal, and it's not even like a yelling argument, it's like, yeah. just asking me for the third time, take the trash out, <laughs> damn it. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. I, I'm a very laid back, not pushover, but like, just whatever. And I think that helps a lot. And she, I don't know, man. It's a very weird dynamic between. Well, you them. gotta have compromise. Like, like I'm, I know that I'm, and I get this from my parents. I'm like super OCD with like, as soon as I finish eating, go take. Like, we don't have a dishwasher, so like once we, you know, we gotta put it on like the dish rack. So like when I'm done eating, I take it to the sink, wash it out, it's dry. Maddie, she'll finish eating, set the bowl down. That's me. Especially if it's like got ketchup or syrup in it. Yep. That's start, starting to crust, crust over. <laughs> and I'm like freaking out. I'm like, no, You're no, no. Staring no. At it. Because, 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 because two things. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, one, one, I know it's going to, it might stick to the plate and either not get fully cleaned off or, you know, whatever. You stay in the soak. Plate. Two, so, yeah, two a day, there's a good yeah. chance that I, again, being OCD about it, I know she'll get to it eventually. But I want to get going. I want to get it cleaned. Like, it just, again, it goes back to how I am with work. So I'll grab it, and once she gets annoyed that I'm, like, cleaning it for because then it's almost like she thinks that I'm acting like she can't do it. Yeah. Kinda. So she gets annoyed with that. And then, two, it's like, I don't know. I, it's just you have to figure out, again, where your habits match up with someone because everyone's raised differently. Um, you guys are probably pretty similar. But <laughs> everyone's raised a little bit differently and like, how, you know, Again, like it goes back to like their habits or their hygiene. So like you gotta fit, figure out like you know if, if you're gonna be laid back, you know is she gonna pick up the slack and is she gonna bitch about it? Or is, she, is it gonna be mutual? Like you gotta figure out kind of where. It's I can work see out. you right now, just y'all sitting on y'all's couch and the, the plates on the coffee table and you're just staring at it while she's watching TV. And you're like, you gonna clean that yet? <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> that's what it is. It's like that's what I do. You gonna clean that? And she's yeah. probably just sat it down, maybe under five minutes. You gonna clean that? It's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it, right? Yeah. I just envision it. It's yeah. pretty funny. It's just again, it's like it's like you said, like she's probably the more laid back person. Her parents are like both really calm, laid back, and they're yeah. so I mean, people like that are great to work with. Like they're easy to work with. Um, great relationships. I mean, that's you know, I feel like while we built like a good team it's gonna feel like we're all pretty like laid back with yeah. each other. But as long as like when it comes down to getting, you know, shit done or getting what needs to be done, um, you know, I don't know. It's like everyone has their own timeline for things. So, you know, if if I wasn't there, it probably would. You know, there'd probably be a couple bowls around the apartment. <laughs> but, <laughs> so you got to join the paper plate gang. Yeah. yeah no, dude, no. Throw it all no, the, ve- the vegans, you know, would kill me, man. <laughs> the uh, climate change. All yeah. that. Are like, you drinking paper. a straw? Uh, What's that, Greta Thornburg? Yes, yeah, you'd attack, how dude. You. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> mm. I was well, gonna ask you, Austin. Um, just kind of a random question. Please. Actually, we've kind of gone through everything I was going to ask, too, just naturally. Did we get any questions on Instagram? Or is it just all him? So I got a few. Some were from uh, Tatiana. Oh. And one, it's the craziest dangerous. one. Oh How do we... What's Jake's phone pass? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, here we go. Here's the weirdest one. And she's not weird, but it was a weird question. Odd. How do we get our parents fit? And I guess in, like, working out. Oh, well, my dad actually got me into working out because he's always been, like, he plays basketball, he rides bikes, he does all sorts of, like, calisthenics stuff. And it's funny, too, (laughs) because, like, I think back, I think we were talking about this the other day, like, you think back before you really get into, like, more so of a serious, and, like, was what Brock was saying a little bit before, is, like, when that kind of becomes your whole spectrum of what you see to where, like, it a lot of things just kind of become you just get desensitized to them to where like i remember when i was younger like uh watching like superman or something like that it's like holy crap how does somebody even look like that or like jason statham it's like he's just so ripped or something like that so like my dad it was like he's got baseballs in his arms like that's his bicep and now it's like i dwarf him (laughs) and i just remember like growing up too like I don't know, he, we would always wrestle or do other stuff like that, but for me, like, I was always just the kid that, like, I like to just be on the computer, I like to just be, I don't know, inside, I, like, it's, I would be the kid to wear the shirt to the beach, other things like that, too, yeah. to where, like, my dad's always the one that, like, when we would go on church mission trips, 
everybody in the youth group would be like, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly, like, can you do the shake weight for five minutes straight or other things oh like that? And he would be yes, like, Yes, I can. Yeah. And like, he would always wake up early in the morning and like race whoever would start running in the morning too, to where like, he never pressured that on me or anything like that too. But it was one of those things where I always had to do a sport every season. And I hated doing sports, too. (laughs) Uh, And so I was just like, after a certain amount of time, I was like, okay, well, you know, like, when we would run cross country or track, like, I always liked just going in the weight room and, like, having the loud music on. And, like, I always just thought it was so cool. Like, I did 500 pounds on the leg press or something like that, too, to where uh, after a certain point in time, it was like, okay, instead of doing a sport, can I just like work out with you? And so we wound up getting P90X and at the time (laughs) it was funny because I was just like, okay, well I'm like at that point, because I was like five, two pretty much until I was like 15 or 16. If you go on my Facebook, like (laughs) the picture of me and like pretty much like eighth grade i was like this tall <laughs> and so i hit a You're growth spurt pretty late but i also was like very small to where i think i was like 115 120 pounds so i was like okay well let me just like see if i can put on some muscle like get some you know like girls attention at the time i had like horrible acne like i didn't make <laughs> eye contact when i talked to people like other things like that to where like i wasn't unpopular or anything like people were still very friendly but i just had a lot of like I just always figured, like, okay, well, if I am in good shape, like, I can be weird, but it's, like, justified, if that makes sense. Like, I can say weird things, but, like, people will look past it because, yeah, (laughs) he looks good, so it comes with a weird mindset. This kid's weird, but he's jacked, man. So, I just started doing that with my dad, and it was one of those things, like, I hated being sore. Like, I would just do pretty much the arm day and the chest day and, like, skip the other days to where my dad days. would be like, you want to do, like, plyometrics? You want to do legs and back? And I'd be like, nah, I'm going to take a rest day. Or, like, I would go up the stairs fast one time and be like, okay, my heart rate is up. Like, that's enough for the day and stuff like that. And it wasn't really until, I don't know, it was something uh, probably around the time that they started to get divorced, like, that was just kind of an outlet for me to where like there were a lot of things from places we had to go to talk to people or like whose house we had to go to like there was a lot of things that there was just not a constant in anything and we were just kind of shuttled around to where like that was an outlet for me to where like nobody can tell me how much i can do like i started just writing down my progress to where like oh last week i did 15 push-ups this week i did 20 or something like that to where once it was uh, and this is something we learn in school too, like exercise psychology. Once it was something that wasn't like an external motivation, once it was more like a habitual kind of, I don't know, like an intrinsic sort of thing is when it started to click for me. So that's kind of like my dad was the one that pushed it into that. But it's funny because like I'll still talk to him to where like now I go camping and like that's something that he used to take us to do. And like now I do... I work out and like that's something he used to try to do with us and like he never pushed anything on us but it's funny that like you kind of come full circle to where certain things I would be like oh we have to do that again now it's like I get excited yeah, to do that plan for that yeah, yeah. things kind of so, like click yeah because like I know when I used to play baseball my dad used to like just get on me about you know whenever we were pitching or something and I'd do something wrong or something he'd like tell me and I'm like you know just moaning and complaining about it, like you said or just like you know slacking off and then you know he'd always just tell me no excuses and i'd be like but this is the reason you know just have something and then like now it's like i'm the guy that's like looking at my like, my clients or people around me i'm like there's no excuses like quit quit <laughs> complaining like stop being a snowflake yeah, and it's yeah. like it's like i was the snowflake though yeah. yeah but you have to recognize that to be able to grow from yeah. it and then i feel like it's that hatred of that former self that oh, like yeah keeps you propelled to to where i don't know i think it was one of those things too that when i first kind of started getting more serious about it because like a lot of times too even when i started working out more consistently like i would have prep food and then throw it away and then just like look up edible cookie dough recipe and then like make that at home or other things like that and then like i had i had a garage gym too and like a lot of times they'd be like, well, you know, I got clothes in the dryer. Like, I could just go fold that instead of working out. And it's like, one 
one day I feel like you just kind of sit and say like, is this the person I want to continue to be? And like, kind of just have that switch. Before. Maddie and I were talking about the other day, like, what would like, what would it be like if we just let ourselves like, just go back to like, like, what if I just stopped working out, went to like 260 pounds and just like <laughs> stop lifting? Like, not only would, what, what would people think about me? Like how I would be so depressed and like hate myself. Like I get... I just, I don't know. I well, just hate that. Be like the rest of America. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dead serious. It's like, like, you unlock your mind. Once you get in the gym and you see how you can push your body, like, it's almost like the red or, red or blue pill. Like, yeah, once you true. once you hit that working out pill, it's like, there's no way I could ever go back. Yeah, I can, I and if I did, that. I would probably be depressed and That's what I mean, yeah. result to either drugs, alcohol, or both, or just like, you know. Well, it's like, no wonder you, like, suicidal. people are, are, like, depressed. It's like, you don't have, it's not like you have to be a bodybuilder, you have to, like, lift or, no. like, do whatever we do. Just push yourself. It's just, you have to, like, yeah, you have to have some kind of, like, we're all driven or motivated to, like, better ourselves, whether it is lifting, or whether it is something else. Like, if you don't have passion in your life, like, you're going to be depressed, you're going to mope around, you're not going to feel like doing the work when you're like you know busy you're gonna feel like just sitting on the couch and doing nothing because you don't have anything to kind of push forward for you know? yeah and i feel like too when that when that outlet or when that kind of daily habit is something that is self-improvement you try to think about like okay well how can i maximize this in other areas of my life too so i don't know i just feel like for me like not only i i, I kind of apply the same things that i've learned in the gym to like kind of cleanliness or tidiness or like finances or you know other things like yeah. that to where it's like you could try to think about okay well like i can clearly see how working towards like self-betterment is paying off in this aspect like can i start trying to apply it in other ways too but i think about that too like if other people don't work out like what do the, what do you get what excited keeps them, for yeah, what keeps the them just like, coming I home and I doing a thinking, sitcom i was thinking the other day like i just I don't know what the people that kill me because look it's it's you know just because this is something i have to like remind myself i was telling griffin about this the other day it's like just because you don't have the same work ethic as me doesn't make me better than like you or doesn't make like another person lazy and it's not that i'm doing sometimes i don't I, you know i don't think what i'm doing is let's say perfection or like enough um but it's like the people that kill me are the ones that are like in like college right now that are, let's say their parents are paying for either their dorm or their apartment. They just go to class, maybe two hours of the day, come home, you know, just watch some TV, watch Netflix. Like, if you can finish a full, like, season a week, it's a lot <laughs> of time wasted. Yeah, I know people that finish the season tonight, but it's like, if, if literally all you have to, and a lot of these people don't even have jobs, it's like, if all you have to do is go to school two, three hours a day, you have no other plans, you don't work out, you don't watch your diet, so you just eat whatever, um, you don't work, it's like, one, like you have no passion, no like you have like no motivation, and two, it's like how do you not have like a 4.0 and or just like crushing it? Like you have to like you have so much free time to do a million things, and it's like I don't know. I just feel like there's so much you could be doing, and people just like just let time wither by, and they'll just do like just unproductive things, and it just like almost frustrates me. That's actually why I dropped out of college. Is uh, I'm on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I. When since my parents were separated, um, my dad would actually uh, live with his girlfriend, and so pretty much from like sixteen onward, like me and my brother just lived in our house on our own, and so like built a rock wall in the stairwell. And, like, right, yeah. We had kind of free reign, but like we didn't go crazy or anything with it. Like, but the funny thing was like my friend had a construction company, so usually in the morning, like my friends would come over. And we had senior release at the time, and so we would uh, like play guitar, climb a little bit, and then like go to school. But then get in the construction truck, drive downtown in the afternoon, work on the project, and then just like go home and make moonshine to sell to his brother who was in college. And so it's like working, and then also like working over the summer from like 15 onward. I work construction for my dad. And so it was weird to me, like, especially to go out to college and be like, okay, well, I have more rules now. It's like summer camp almost living in the dorm. And then also like between classes, like what am I going to do? Just go back and like watch Netflix or hang out in like the commons or something like that. And so I just felt like, okay, well, I don't know. I just feel like I have less freedom, but also 
more freedom in that regard too that's just being wasted so i wound up just dropping out so that i could work and go to community college and stuff like that but i do think about that because at the time i had friends that like their parents paid their grocery bill and they'd be like oh well what should i get like i have 200 dollars a week to spend on groceries and it's like i'm riding my bike to costco and trying to like spread 35 dollars and stuff like that but i feel like it's one of those things that like yeah it's easy to kind of compare sometimes and be like oh all they have to do is go to class and like they have all this free time but i feel like too like having your back against the wall you get kind of somewhat more of habits or discipline to where i feel like that's a more fulfilling life because you have that kind of lifestyle established to where like some of my friends like they make six figures and they they went easy through college and they've kind of had a nice job that their parents have kind of helped them get into after school and it's like one of those things that you know they're not to be mean but like they're fat now like they're an alcoholic like and here we are just not even six seven years out of high school too and it's like you've aged 20 years because really you only have vices to spend your time when you're not at work so i don't know i just think about that too like i feel like i'm like talking down off the soapbox i'm not (laughs) no 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 (laughs) but you know what i mean i feel the same way it's like because like right now when like i'm in school and granted you know as i already like prefaced before like i plan on like dropping out soon it's like i don't even feel like i'm in school when i'm there because like you said like you're there for those two hours and then it's just free range yeah so it's like i've already built in my schedule i train at least like one client a day sometimes two or three or whatever it is and then i'm doing a lot of freelance work so it's like i'm constantly like working or busy during those hours but it's yeah i mean school is almost like the fill-in times but i'm sure when you're at school you're thinking about all right what videos oh are yeah edit, i'm editing during class okay well, like i'm sure just <laughs> Like, the, class, the class that's my point the classes i'm in are just so like i mean again like if you're in school and you have to be in school you gotta get a degree that's different but like for me it's like or if you have an opportunity to either you know make money outside of school or, or pursue whatever you're doing entrepreneur wise then it's like it almost school is just on the back burner it's just it's it's like an hour or two wasted in my day or where i have to sit in with these other kids that are just you know, scrolling through Instagram, going through the motions, yeah. and I'm like, "What? Yeah, they're just going through the motions." That's actually like what I told my parents. Like, I wanted to drop out because got plans and everything, and you know, saving all this money and you know, such. And I, I make a a bigger living than most of these kids will outside of college or for the next ten years outside of like, you know whatever Capital One job they get. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like, you know, my mom was like, just you know. Go through the motions, just get it done. I don't want to go through the motions ever. And still in life. not use it. And still yeah. not use it. Like, wh- like, what is the point? Like you said, the people that got six figure jobs. Like, so many people would be like, a lot of people these these people aren't getting six figure jobs. But to get that, people would be like, I'd love that. You know, like six figures. Um, you know, working my job, it's secure, it's great. But it's like if you don't enjoy the nine to five, if you, if you don't enjoy that, what is that? Eight hours of your day, then that just sucks. The six figures means nothing. And then and you have to justify like. Oh well, I'm making this money, so like I'm spending my time doing this thing. Let me get the nice car or something. Yeah, like so that then you feel. spend the extra money you got for the few hours you have of freedom each day, and then it's just not worth it. You're working, you're going through like hell or, or just like frustration for five days out of the week. Just enjoy two days, and it's just not worth it. So it's just like I don't want to go through the motions with anything. I'd rather, like you said, put my back against the wall. And like go for it and if i fail at least again i've i've come accustomed to like the lifestyle or the i don't know i I've, I've become equipped to live under those tougher yep. circumstances so that even if i do fail at least i'm feeling accomplished or i feel like i have a purpose or a passion for something rather than just going through the motions doing the safe thing it's just like where's the where's the fun of the challenge in that like you get bored real quick and although you, again you might enjoy like the weekends, it's like what, what I don't know what's the point. Yeah, and Capital One's always hiring, so it's like yeah, they yeah. are always. <laughs> so hiring, if you do yeah. fail, you know See, it's always a fallback. I uh, I don't know if I'm lazy or whatever it is, but I've got I, I do a lot of stuff outside the gym where I play a lot of golf, and I, I guess I'm, I'm gonna work till I'm 80 until I die because when I work for a big company now and um, I spend a lot in my my hobbies in the gym. I love playing guitar. I like to drink. I like to bowl. I, I like I love playing on my wiffle ball team downtown, and I like playing golf and going outside and doing stuff like that. So it's like I don't spend. Maybe I should spend more time trying to progress in life and get farther ahead than I am. But 
I love my free time. I love. Is that because you have to dredge through your your nine to five though? Is that no, why like, I like you enjoy my it? job's not bad. I mean, okay. it's I mean, it some days suck just like any job, but yeah. I mean, for right now, I'm working in. The- yeah, I guess that's the thing to say too. It's not like whoever works the nine to five is like doing something wrong too. It's like some people enjoy that, or some people do enjoy the job, or like it's fine and it's um it's a good situation. But I, I guess, uh, but you still have like again side hobbies or hustles that you're working on with gym flow and different yeah. things so you have like other aspirations that you're like putting time into but it's like the people that just kind of like passively go through life it's just like this is like all you got so like maximize this time especially like people in their like their 20s or whatever it's like the kids that kill me are like the ones that would laugh at me for like going to the gym instead of the football game or or what are you studying for your like personal training certification during class or like whatever it is but it's like I'm working to maximize these, like, years of my life instead of, you know, the same kids that were partying on, like, the weekends, drinking, they're doing the same thing in college. So you're spending eight years, it's just another four years of extended high school. Yeah. And then once they're out, it's like, okay, then you're just going to get married to whoever, you know, and then you're just going to have kids, and then you're just going to, you know, fall back. And it's just going to be like a, uh, you're just letting life come to you instead of you going forward, I feel like is a way to put it. And I, I think a big thing, too, is... um. Especially for me, I feel like if I didn't have the gym, then I would feel like sometimes later on in life, um, it's so it's so much harder to kind of learn something, learn a hobby, other things like that, especially when you feel like you're not good at it. And so I feel like for me, if I didn't have that aspect and then like if I'm 25 now and I wanted to learn how to paint or something like that, then it's like, okay, what am I wasting my time for? Like there's no gratification because it... It looks like it sucks, and like I feel like I'm just like just screwing around, you know. But I feel like having something that you know you have as a daily ritual that you can see progress over a long term. But then it's also like, what is that quote about that the a good physique like it can't be bought, it can't be this. It requires like determination or something like. I think it's just an yeah. Arnold quote or something like that. But it's one of those things that like really kind of having that day in day out like your your efforts are what creates that end result and stuff too to where if you slack if you're lazy like then you're a representation of that i feel like uh a lot of other skills like you can kind of apply that same mentality too yeah well i wanted to touch and if you don't want to bring it up that's totally cool we can switch gears a little bit but getting back to like how you were so driven at so young of an age you and maddie both Obviously, Maddie might – was she that driven before y'all met or she got a, got that off I you? I feel like – Obviously, if you live yeah, together with yeah. or around you, it's like, oh, I got to keep well, up or I'm going to fall apart. We've built each other up so much and I think that's uh, – I don't think she gives herself enough credit for that is like we – that's the good thing too is like I think all of us can relate to this. It's like – when you, like, uh, we're all on elixir print lifting, right? And so, like, when we date a girl, whether we met her at the gym or not, like, you know, they're going to pick up onto that. So, that you know, they're going to want to work out, too. Um, but the difference is, like, I had an ex before that, like, okay, I got her into lifting. She lost weight. She was looking better, all that. But it's, like, she wasn't there for herself. She was there for me. Yeah. And that's the difference. And, like, so when I met Maddie, she had already been um, – about a year, year and a half into weightlifting. And so she was already motivated by herself. And so that once we started dating, she was already had the mentality of like self-improvement, working hard on her own. Thank God she wasn't into goofy ass Instagram workouts and she was actually like trained legit. Yeah, no, she does train. Credit probably to Diesel Dad for giving her some, uh, you know, some 70s, 80s bodybuilder lingo. But anyway, um, and so to wrap to go back to your point, yeah, she was already driven before we met, but I think just as much as like I've improved and gotten more and more of a work ethic and like more focused, more driven, I think she's gotten better and better every single year. And she's working on her CPT now and she's doing a lot. And I think sometimes she doesn't look back and see kind of how much progress she's made. No. Um, and it's not all credit to me. I think we just build up each other so much. Um, but I, th- I, I just I think both of us are just I think all of us in general are just capable of just kind of compounding on top of that. For sure. And um, yeah, I, th- I think to wrap up to your point, yeah, she was she was driven before. But I think again, it's just about pushing further and be you know and building that work ethic. So well, relaying our heading a little yeah route off of that. 
getting to some of the plans you'll have and are looking forward to with a big project. Is that something you'd want to talk about at all coming up, even though you don't have much set in a foundation? Yeah. Intended. Um, but like, all I'll say, I guess, is that uh, it's been like three years in the making. Um, is that you know something that we want to uh, open up at some point, and um, well, not at some point, probably in the in the in the you know sometime either next year in the uh, winter or in the spring. Um, but we plan on uh, yeah making bigger moves in the fall, which we're excited about. But it's really exciting and really nervous at the same time because it's a lot of money. A lot of seriousness happening. And it's uh, kind of like a first for, you know, a, a thing that hasn't been around Richmond in a while. Yeah, and I think it's just one of those things that uh, a lot of people have either done wrong or they haven't gone. They haven't gone before you're reading the notes. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people have either done it wrong or they haven't gone like all in yeah. um, with it or they haven't had the right branding. I think I think you know me and Griff were talking about the other day. Like, there's some people that start businesses and. Um, this is something I think, to credit you, and I know you don't take this in like a, in a bad way, is like a lot of businesses, they'll try and do it all themselves and bootstrap, and to a point you have to, but for some things, like if you can't design your own graphics, edit your own videos, if you don't know what you're doing, you need to like help, get someone to help you, or pay someone to do it, like with your labels, like I bet if you tried to do your own labels, it would look like chicken I scratch. I don't yeah. know if you saw my repost from five years ago. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah. me. So, but again, this is something that like, you know, Griffin has helped with tremendously. You, to your credit, we were talking about the other day, have become a lot more proficient in Photoshop and other things as well. Yeah, and you. it's it's just like, if I think a lot of businesses, again, they either um, they jump too quickly and they don't save up the money properly, they don't plan properly. Like I said, we've been planning this for at least like two years together, if not the extra year. That That's tough to like, everybody wants it now. I definitely want shit now. And yeah. to like have to know that this is going to be a two, three, four, for your process, process of, of yeah. saving it's hard and, to see not, that. and not knowing if it's truly going to come to fruition. It doesn't even feel real, but like we're, we, you know, we're seriously, you know, thinking about again, taking that big, you know, step and, uh, you know, plans in the fall. And it's like, it doesn't feel real. But then like the closer we get, we're like, shoot, it's like four months away, five months away. Like I was yeah. thinking, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I won't get into it too much detail. Yeah. Cause again, it's like, it's just one of those things where you say it, people don't believe it's and real, plus, and it's like... I understand. I, now yeah. that I think about it, I, I, my personal self, wouldn't probably say it until I know it's concrete going to happen. Yeah, because so there's, there's a lot of people that... Big things coming. Everything's... Yeah, yeah so. everyone says big things coming, and then they don't really mean it. Um, there's a fine line, because you want, you want people to be aware and to yeah. know about XYZ, but at the same time, like... People just love talking, especially in social media, and yeah. it's like until you do something, just shut up. Well, that's well, th that's what everything. <laughs> like, runs. I hate it because a lot of a lot of people out there are doing it just to, I don't know, trying to like get some like notice ability or something like that. Out. Yeah, but like a lot of people are trying to build off hype and like making themselves. Everyone's look, an entrepreneur. With yeah. that, that too, and it's like we're just out here. I don't know, man. It's everybody's trying to build off something that they're not. And are trying to make themselves look like something that they're not. Yeah. And it's whatever. If that makes you happy, if that's what you want to do, it's whatever. But at the same time, it's like, man, everybody just can see through it, though. You know? Or at least I know I can see through it. I guess because I've been in it for a little while. Not, I feel like I'm not even in it, in it. But, like, since I've been in it and I'm doing shit, a lot of shit on my own. But I do have y'all's help. But it's like, I can read a lot of people or just, like, look at them and just be like, oh, man. I don't know. Like, I think there's a balance between, like... You want to build. Stop. You want to build the brand in like the customer's mind or in the in the person's mind, right? Like you want people to see Jim Flow and you know think quality products and such. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to like appear like, oh, I'm Jim Flow CEO. I'm like big balling. I'm you know driving this or that. Or yeah. I'm like you don't want to put on that thing. Like you know you're on there vlogging goofy stuff. You got the Android like camera slowly, you know, <laughs> working on no. the face. <laughs> but it's like. It's it's uh, genuine. It's authentic, and I think people like relate to that because yeah. it isn't like you're putting on some fake show, or you know, you're acting like you said like something you aren't. Because it's, I don't know. True. I, I think know. there's a certain point too, um, where you kind of not get too big for your britches, but like when let's just say like Christian Guzman, for example, like but he there's walks somewhat. The walk. I know. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm saying like to me when I see like. 
his new videos now have like a team of videographers and yeah. editors and like they're using like red cameras yeah. and getting all these crazy angles and transitions and now he's opening up like a compound and stuff like that it almost makes it seem like like what used to be oh he's a kid he's just like me like he's doing his own thing now it's almost like there's that removal to where it almost feels like not corporate but like there's yeah. that I, there's I that, that removal of that connection if that makes sense it seems out of, like almost not impossible but it seems it seems like he's out of a, like a different league now yeah. it's like man yeah. he doesn't see he doesn't seem as relatable now Maddie True. and I were talking about that when we watched the Alpha Land like videos and cuz we were like we're excited but we almost like are like not happy about this like we're almost like it's it's like obviously obviously like we're jealous of him in like a nice way yeah but it's like we're almost like not happy with this happening because it's like like you said like before he was okay the successful guy with this clothing company he's doing big things like he's more relatable but now like you said like he's not even really he's definitely not editing or vlogging his own stuff now he's got these like giant plans that just seem unreachable it's almost like you know it just seemed like someone so out of touch. Like none of us would relate to like the CEO of like anyone on Wall Street or something like that. Yeah. But like when you see someone for so long, be at like one level, like you want them to, them to succeed. But then once once they surpass a certain point, it's almost like um, it's not like you want them to fail. But it's almost like again, you can't like you said relate to them or true. And I guess since we're not, we haven't even been close to like levels below yeah. what he's been to. It's like we don't relate. And I I can see where like you're always. Regardless of where you're at, you do, you know, once you get to a level, uh, I forgot where I was saying. I was talking to somebody about Gym Flow, and they're like, oh, what would be your, define your su- your success as within Gym Flow? What would be successful for you for Gym Flow, a goal? I was like, if I was able to, like, 100% live and support, pay my groceries, pay my bills, support 100% off of Gym Flow, that would be successful to me. But I do a but in there. I'm sure once I got to that level, my goals would totally just like down. lifting your goals like, surpass yeah. you hit yeah. 225 so, on the bench the first same time. for like, him yes. i'm sure he's like you know yeah. i'm gonna keep it like this but now to him it's like oh i'm leveling up because i'm able to hire a team to make my production that much better i'm able to make this compound and i'm leveling up you know eventually you get to a point where you're just gonna have to take those big leaps and the, the impossibles and like obviously i think come everything compounds too like knowing that like you get to a certain level that like nothing is impossible like in his in his instance i'm sure literally he has everything at his reach yeah, you know it's true. like he can literally do whatever he wants so to us that's at this current moment <laughs> impossible to us it's yeah. like damn <laughs> that we're way off uh, from that but it's respectable though for sure St- it still is respectable i'm not saying like, yeah. like you're saying we aren't hating it's just like it's gotten sort of like so crazy that it's like yeah. whoa it's um, almost unbelievable it's like when you find maybe like a musical artist that not many people know about and then they like hit the mainstream it's not like you're mad that they're successful but it's like oh you make like pop for the masses now it's like not that niche like nobody else knows about it and it's like i don't you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so for sure for sure speaking of which (laughs) i was gonna ask you this because i was thinking about it because i was at costco how do you feel about like micro formulating quality product and getting like oh this is gonna have the best like feeling a pump you sample all these different things this is gonna be the best kind of focus like i've already seen so many people post about the new walk the lime label how quality it is and you know like getting that flavor perfectly how do you feel about like working that hard to try to just you know like break yourself a cut above the other competitors but then having something like C4, like that's what everybody associates as like, oh, pre-workout, like C4, you know, where that's just like a proprietary caffeine and beta alanine blend with like a fruit punch flavor. <laughs> I guess because we're a niche and C4 is marketing, they used to be a niche. They used to be like, years yeah, ago, they, they used to be yeah. hardcore. They used to have like, D- I think they might have had DMA they products or something like that. Like they used to have hardcore products. And I guess once you do scale to that fucking size, you just can't afford to make quality like you can't mass produce the expensive shit like we make like you just or you could but the margins would be so little that like you cut corners i guess yeah, to get you, to that level and uh i guess you know when you when you get to that level and you want to scale you need to be relatable to everybody you need to be co- super cost effective so you need to make your products cheap cheap as cheap as possible and make them available everywhere just so that means your margin has to be ridiculously like good 
And, you know, for ours, I don't know. I, I feel like, at least now, and I don't see it ever changing, me, and I'm sure Jake would feel the same way, like, us 100% believing and feeling in our gut that we're making the best that we know we could and not worrying about... Obviously, we need to make money. It's a business. It is a business. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, but, it is a business. But, like, that isn't anywhere close to our number one goal when we're creating or formulating a product. It's what can we make the best of... And our at our ability at this moment. I don't want to make you think that I don't want to take. Yeah, like wholeheartedly, I want to get the best result that I can possibly get out of a product that we we create. So like, it's hard to like be able to compete with other people that are, have none of that in mind. They are like, hey, what's going to make my pocket the biggest, you know, yeah. and make it the biggest reachable product? Because you know, places like Costco, Walmart want the best margin product, not the best. What's yeah, you know, it does kind of suck. To it's see about their value super, brands, you know, nineteen ninety nine on the shelf. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. And some people just like to go in there and, you know, some people like the, the cheapness of the C4. It's and tough there's, to... There's people out there that, you know, if they aren't serious about their goals, C4 is for them, for sure. You know, if they want to just go in and ha have a little kick in the butt with some caffeine and save some money, for sure. Go ahead, you know. Obviously, you don't... You must not take... And I'm not... You know, I hate... Yes, I am calling out, but I'm not. You know, you must not take your goals seriously if you're going to put any amount of money into a product that is not... Formulated for serious True. results. You know? That is a good way to put it too. It's like you must you're going to put money in. Yeah. Oh. All related back to coffee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Just like, <laughs> just like, just like the uh, you know Jim Flow or these other brands are more uh, niche, like you said. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I'll have like clients come up to me like, oh, something about pre workout, and they'll just mention a brand they bought at GNC or Vitamin Shop, and I'm like, well. Once you're ready to come up to the big leagues, you can go online and get different brands, you know. <laughs> but um, just like that, I mean, just like coffee, like you know, there's your Folgers. You ever heard of Starbucks? Yeah, there's your Starbucks, and you taste it, and you're like, this tastes like coffee. You're right, Lindsay, it does. It tastes just like coffee or whatever, you know. But it's like once you have specialty coffees, you know, and you're like, wow, this is kind of like a hint of strawberry. This is tea-like. This is like a dark chocolatey. Um, this is plum, whatever it is. Like you start getting these different flavors. I said it was cult like. like oh, you it's start cult like. I do it with wine. Yeah, you start getting these flavors. It's just like wine taste or anything. You get yeah. these specialty coffee. It's you can see the difference. You're paying more. Like Folgers, you might get like a twenty pound bag for X Y Z, but then you pay the specialty coffee. It might be like twice the price or three times. But you know that that cup is going to be enjoyable. It's going to be worth it. Just like when you take a pre workout, that's quality. You know that workout's going to be great. You're going to be excited to take mm. it. When you're, I mean, we were talking about the label, like when, you know, stepping up their label, it might cost some extra money to have the more yes. metallic label, but you know what? It's worth it when the person, you know, is taking it out of the box and they're like, wow, like I'm excited to take this. I'm pumped up for the gym. Like, you know, it, the presentation with anything, I mean, open an Apple product and, and like the presentation. Yeah, yeah the overall experience. You know? There's something yeah. about in a day and age where everything is mass produ produced and on Amazon for the cheapest thing, a five star review. Like mm -hmm. there is something I feel like. I've been trying to go back to more with a lot of things, whether it be, you know, like if you get nice clothes or other things like that, like appreciating a craftsmanship to where, yeah, you can get like a table from Ikea that's made out of clipboard material, or you can get like an actual like woodwork table to where like, and I know this from working construction too, like everything in associations is just like hardy plank siding, kind of just big bulk cheap things but like we're walking an old home there's a feeling to it there's a i don't know there's just something from a different time too to where like i just feel like especially appreciating some of these things you start to just notice when somebody puts that extra step into you know the little details and it's not just uh okay well how quick can we get this out sort yeah. of thing so yeah i definitely agree totally agree you know it's 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 tough to relay because sometimes I feel like it's it's a no-brainer because it's the way I deep down internally think. And I, I realized, especially like the other day when I wanted to talk about pump, I, see, I saw a few posts pop up, people talking about pump. I was like, to me, it's ridiculously simple, like how to create a better, bigger and better pump. But some people out there truly don't know. And I guess I need to like obviously do more talking about supplements because some people just don't realize there is a quality difference between – a C4 product compared to a Gym Flow product or other brands that are out there that, you know, make quality stuff. It's just like, but people just see that C4 is available everywhere and they're like, oh, that must be great because it's available everywhere. Like, 
big places carry it, you know, so it yeah. must be good. And they've got ads on everything. Yeah, and they're yeah. Able, because their margins are so good, they're able to market to literally everybody with social media, marketing, and all these other ads and stuff like that, where we don't have really a true budget as of yet. I'm sure eventually we will, but we were, you know, just trying to keep our stuff in stock, uh, you know, to be able to have a budget for marketing ads and stuff like that. So we're, we're putting our money budget into the right resources, which are our ingredients and products. In green suits. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, we do have money for suits. <laughs> <Indeed>. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I definitely want to, that's one goal of mine for sure to talk more about supplements and break them down. This is way off subject but I was looking at your poster and what is there a chunk missing in the left teardrop in your quad like down low is that what I do see what you're talking about now I oh, hope yeah. not yeah dang that's a good point I don't know it looks like a divot yeah, yeah. Is that from the accident? I know y'all don't see this but on my wall facing the opposite direction I have a picture from a show that I did about two years ago or a year and a half ago but uh, I don't know there's a chunk missing <laughs> looks shark, like uh, I might have a defile <laughs> shark bait shark bite hoo ha ha or shark bait, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Misshapen. Yeah, I'm deformed, man. I'm that <laughs> ugly, ugly dude. So, left my le- so, so right it's in my right leg. Yeah. Left leg. The teardrop. Oh, yeah, yeah. See that, yeah. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, back to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Jake, you want to get some cards? <laughs> yeah, let's... Uh, so, we have a little card set right here with some crazy questions. I guess three or four of them. And who knows? We might have some fun. We might hit a couple of them, but yeah, let's do let's three. do four, so that four. way we can oh, each read okay, one. Okay, yeah, I know, I got you. So okay. there's one for me. So uh, this is ask the internet, or answer the internet, whatever. And uh, questions as fucked up as you are. And uh, we saw this on another show or another podcast. And I've seen it on Barstool Sports quite often, where they're asking random people, random celebrities, and whatnot. It's super fucking funny to see them answer some of the questions. <laughs> And uh, we're all going to answer these. These aren't anything serious, obviously, by the way. Uh, they're just for fun. And uh, we want to see what kind of answers and questions that we debate on. Should hopefully I go they, first? Hopefully he's don't get any of us in any trouble. <laughs> this is the all or nothing yeah, show, Brock. Yeah. You are hey, yeah, we're, we're, going, we're giving it all here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go first. And uh, I guess on the alt... <laughs> What? <laughs> My man just had a. Um, <laughs> He's like, the, He's boiler, the boiler the just released. The that Jake picked up. <laughs> you know oh, yeah. I guess they're all the same. Yeah. Well, I'm going to read mine first, and I guess we all can answer. <laughs> so mine is debate the internet. How much money would you. How much money would it take for you to give up your favorite food for the rest of your life? Well, that one's not that. Uh, that's, mine's not that messed up, and. I'm going to answer it off the top of my head right now. That's kind of a weak card. It is, but <laughs> yeah. how much money would I take? My favorite out? food in my life is pizza. Yeah, so pizza. Uh, for yeah. me to never eat it again, Fuck. it had to be t- a minimum of $10 million. $10 million. $10 million. Because I could live. I could, <laughs> Damn. I'm, you can give me like. 10 bucks. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Tree fitty. I mean, I'd go maybe, maybe like. Like a mill, I guess. Uh, I, mean, I mean, but I'm I'm taking it. So take this. This is the way I thought, and maybe I needed to let this out. This is knowing you're going to get that ten million. This isn't like, oh no, never mind then. Like an offer that you would take, knowing that you're going to get the money, ten million. Like I'm going to get it in cash immediately if I don't eat pizza the rest of my life. So take that into consideration. Not, it's not like true. Oh, if oh if I might get the money. So like, I would. would you go that? I level? would. Uh, mine would be cheeseburgers. And uh, I would probably do 10, 10 uh, grand. 10 grand, yeah. To never eat a burger the rest of your life? 10 grand, dude. Oh, that's oh, man, that, I love yeah. burgers. Knowing you're going to get that money. like. I mean, even I if you put everything. it into a compound interest account, like, <laughs> that's still. The vegan burgers count now. <laughs> Impossible Meatless burgers. Impossible, yeah, yeah, you might get to 260 um, and be lazy and <laughs> yeah. once you have no test. Y'all are making me feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Y'all are making me feel bad for this. Yeah, you cheap bitch. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, easily. I don't know. Ten mil is pretty large, though. Yeah, that's Just awesome. how much for would one gonna, food? But I'm I could still eat. Get it. I could still eat pizza. I could still have chicken sandwiches. All these different foods. Yes, spaghetti. I'm gonna get my ten million. Just yeah, one, it's just one food group. It's one. It's not even a food group. One food to like eliminate. Yeah, ten grand. Would you want oh, more? If you if you had to eat Impossible Burgers instead of burgers. Versus eliminating them. Yes, I want the same amount. I'd want because I'm essentially giving it up. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna eat an Impossible Burger, so it'd be basically the same amount. Yeah, you're right. Uh, my favorite food is also pizza, and I would say 
Gosh, it would have to be at least six figures. I would say pushing like at least 500,000 just because, you know, it takes the edge off after a long <laughs> week. Pizza, man, it just hits. It hit, yeah. it hit different so, than all the other foods. I agree. And that's also like... I just have my little things. <laughs> There's just little things Such I feel like. That, yeah. Oh, shit. I'm in like, like, there's Buddha, there's, yeah. and there's pizza. That's the third. And, uh, me and Buddha's you know. favorite. Yeah. So, the Buddha special. I know. And I, I feel like I'm the odd man out. Domino's is the best pizza. Oh, my God. Domino's. I've had all of them. They're I've good, had every other kind. The best. I'd say bottoms up. But oh, if we're talking about chains, we're talking like Domino's. Chains, oh, Domino's, Domino's. No, all. I go Domino's. Uh, well, I hate the Pizza Hut in Mechanicsville because they're fucking trash. <laughs> I don't know why, but they, they it's like they never have pizzas or the, it's like it takes over an hour to get Dude, <laughs> Pizza they, Hut doesn't they have they pizza. Out of <laughs> yeah, ice out of cream machine. Because I, I wanted too many pizzas for some reason. No, I was doing a special or something. So they don't like make their crust, they just have crust yeah, like three made? delivered, yeah. Okay. And I was like, what? Like, y'all, you can't. Make hand make some just crust take a large like, and cut some crust yeah, off that bitch. <laughs> and yeah, sorry, brought a mediums for the day. It's like who the f- all right. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So they suck, but uh, I do. I like Domino's, but man, if I get a good stuffed crust pepperoni pizza from Pizza Hut, man, that's just yeah, just... stuffed crust is where it's at. They used to have those dipping strips too. Oh, yeah. My dad would bring them to school lunch for me, and <laughs> dipping strip sitting at the special table a with special your parents, table. and it's like oh, yeah. peasants <laughs> eating your square pizza. <laughs> I used to buck down some square pizzas. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd always get, I'd always yeah, get three, three slices. And my, my tray would be. Like, you know, you'd have the small pockets. It would just be laid with pizza. <laughs> i get nothing else. It would just be the pizza. So my favorite, and this is off topic as we're going through this, but my favorite chain pizza hut, Papa all day, Papa John's. Oh, Papa, have Garlic you seen butter? the Day of Reckoning? No. Oh, he did an interview. Basically, you know how he got ousted oh. as the CEO. Yeah, I, forgot what I did not know. And you he did? was, like, super greasy and, like, it was... They kept cutting the camera angle like over his shoulder oh, and like, and he's, like up just, close the in his face. The garlic butter's just <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> weird lighting. And he's like, "I've had forty pizzas in thirty days, to, and the quality is not what it used to be." And so he's like, "All these people should be in jail for what they did to me." But stay tuned, the day of reckoning Reckon will come. come. Yeah. Oh <laughs> and the guy was like, "Why don't you just set the record straight right now?" And he's like. <laughs> dude. Yo, this dude's gone mad. Like, oh, Papa, Papa John. Skull mask Papa John, mode. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Papa, three. American uh, uh, history, uh, uh, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna curb stone. He's gonna come back, buzzed head. Yeah. All these other pizza chain <laughs> heads will yeah. wind up suicide with two gunshots <laughs> in the back of the head. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, so, Papa John's is it for me. Uh, pizza well. Hut's right there, but Papa John's, man. Sorry. Oh, better ingredients, Jay. better people. Better pizza, Papa John. All right. Let's hear it. All right, Austin. This is a poll of the internet. Uh, would you punch your grandma in the face to fuck the girl of your dreams? <laughs> so are we talking like an all-out punch? I mean, you got to punch her. You got to punch Gam Gam. Do <laughs> we say who the girl, girl of my our dreams, dreams is? Um, uh, I guess you can say. I don't, sure. I, like... Hmm? Yes. And how, how long I yes. think Maddie's listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> earmuffs, Maddie. Well, earmuffs. Two, hours, two hours in. She's earmuffs. Yeah. Going. Uh, yes, that would be a yes. Ah, uh, no. I mean, what if you're a one okay, pump well, chump? Since, since it's a yes, then you gotta tell us who it is. <laughs> I, take it back. I take it back. No. Spell it out. Um, write it down. No. Are they local? Are they famous? <laughs> Depends on what you think famous is. Uh, I think it's I think, I think I'm it not going to answer on the local part. <laughs> I think it depends which grandma. Uh, well, that t- yes, ooh. most definitely. But yeah, I think yes for one two, grandma. Man. What if she's dead? Open no, don't <laughs> yeah, open the closet. <laughs> Shatter. But I guess yes, deep down, if I had, if my grandmother was in my face and I had to punch her, no, I couldn't do it. True. Like being straight honest, no. But. I'd think about it, but then... I think I'd explain the situation. You gotta take one, Grandma. Tyson, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then while she's so processing, just <laughs> all, of the, all of the hips and torso yeah. just... <clears throat> yeah. It's an ab twist. Give it the old Deontay <laughs> Wilder. Just, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't think I, don't think I could, go, could punch Grandma in the face. <laughs> I mean, I'd... Think about it. <sighs> what are you thinking, Griffin? 
Well, you know, my grandma one time slapped me in the Disney store. Oh, oh so I've been, been coddling that day, up. The day of reckoning. <laughs> the day of reckoning. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, sorry, <laughs> Granny T. Game, and man. she wouldn't let me wear a t-shirt to school one time because she said it was too cold when my dad was out of town. So uh, I had to wear a long sleeve, and then she drove me to school, so I smelled like cigarettes the whole uh, day. So I got two in the chamber. Two. <laughs> 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 so, but I'd have to think about who the dream girl is. Truth be told, that's a good question. Well, I got a few. I'm just, I feel like I a safe bet is Scarlett Johansson. I feel like she's always a See, good one. To me, I feel like too. Like Hollywood starlets, I'm just. It's just like, man, they don't live. They're neither. soft. No Ooh, curves, okay. really. All right, then who, who is yeah. It? You know, yeah, probably you some on Instagram, Instagram or thought. Yeah, 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 probably some Instagram thought. I'm trying to think of who it would be though, but I don't I know. Like I just hope I am. <laughs> maybe, maybe local, He's maybe like, not. Yeah. That's a good question. Yes. The local yes. gold gym fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm Come making on. my way through. <laughs> Talk to me in a year. <laughs> All right, my. What man. about you? Wait, you didn't, no, answer. No, you didn't answer the question. Did I you? did. Did you? I said I'd yeah. punch you oh, right okay. in the face. Uh, yeah. Who's the dream girl? I say it'd probably be like Scarlett Johansson. I had oh, to think okay. about. Oh, it. I came up with like an easy go to an actor. Everybody like. And you're in a relationship, you can always be like, oh, my wife could be like, oh, he's hot, I'd bang him. And I'd be like, oh, she's hot. I'd yeah, I mean, him. I could but go through Instagram one. right now and figure one out, but I, you'd have to give me time to like... Would she be a wheat grind athlete? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I don't think so. Okay. I can make it, it could be... Megan Fox, it could be a lot of... Lot of uh, Megan Fox falling off. I forget yeah, she, was, she was Similar nice at the Kate time, Upton. but I need a little more thickness than that. Kate but, Upton. Uh, no, I'm saying that she used to be all the rage. And yeah, Kate Upton was never the rage for me. No, no. no I saw her. Yeah, no. Like you know, they, she shit. went to Mechanicsville. She went to Short Pump AMP before. And, uh, they yeah, she bought, she bought a car at Mechanicsville yeah. Honda. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Crazy. No, he's, he's all right. All right, we ready? Yeah, flip it, picture. All right, would you rather have your dick and balls located on your taint or have them where they normally are, but with balls on top and dick on the bottom. What did Rich Piano now, used to say? Got a good dick to ball ratio. <laughs> yeah. A perfect dick now, to ball ratio. Now, I unfortunately I've already read this question before oh, because this was on one of Seth Ferozzi's podcasts. Now, all right. So the situation is, you either got your dick and balls basically a few inches below where they are now, to where if you sat down, you'd basically be sitting on them. So you have that discomfort. Okay, or it's like right in between your legs. So like comfort gone. It's already worse than it is. All right, or you wouldn't be able you got, to thrust either. Or yeah. you just dip. Yeah, you just yeah. Dip. <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> or <laughs> you have jackhammer. Jackhammer. <laughs> or you have your balls on top of your dick, and they're just kind of like hanging over it. Like droopy? Droop. Like well, <laughs> it's kind of hanging on top. Like so, how many years? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it does depend. Uh, I, I When I read this, I thought I'd go balls on top. Only because it would make life a little difficult with some things. But I don't want to have to worry about the discomfort. Especially on like a hot summer day. And if you got them like right in between your legs, just... No, what, what they'd be what, sticking that much so, more yeah, to my legs. That's what I mean. <laughs> I kind of liken it to a paper cut. You get a paper cut, and you never realize how much that area comes in contact with everything. Yes. So I feel like if it was lower, it's like, damn, I really put pressure on this area yeah. all the time. <laughs> another so another, another pro have balls on of top. having the balls on top, and I'm not saying I'm going with that yet, but another pro is if you do get a swift kick to that area, you aren't getting You're kicked in the balls Yeah. Yeah, you are now impenetrable. I just wonder, you know, if you, <laughs> but if you got a heart on and the balls are just kind of like, like hanging over top. Trunk. Yeah, they're like <laughs> elephant ears on top. I don't know. It's uh, it's not a, a dream scenario at all, but I mean, yeah, I think I'm rolling balls on top. Yeah. yeah. And I would say, too, depending on... Okay, never mind. Ah, <laughs> I was going to say, it might make you look like you're packing a little bit more. <laughs> because yeah. it's heavier on It's kind of like, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd have to. Well, I'm going balls on top. Because, yeah, balls on top. Fortunately, yeah, fortunately, yeah. 
I'm what just, happens, like, say the ball's on top, but when you're smashing, they're getting smashed a lot. Yeah. So, <laughs> you gotta, hair, like, almost pull like, them Get a hair tie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hold them up. I'd rather... But... That's a good point. If you're, if oh, that is a good point. <laughs> Depending on yeah. certain ways. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, things would change. Maybe, maybe, sure. you know, yeah. if, 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 It'd be a lifestyle change. If you're on top... <laughs> Then you, I think you're you're, you're You'd have hurting. To, you could like, get probably an adaptive cup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. I think, but then I, it'd still go down, though. Yeah. Don't, oh, don't I'm still getting it. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna pleasure. pleasure but then, if you think pleasure, about pleasure. though, if it's lower, like you'd pretty much have to like keep your leg up. Dude, and I like, was thinking literally when when you first said it's hanging off your taint, like. Me laying on my back with my legs, legs. both legs on. Like, that's how, that's, she was, like, she's yeah. taking it. Yeah. Pegging yourself. Yeah, my legs would be hiked over my head. I'd be, yeah. looking, up, I'd be looking up at her and she'd be <laughs> looking down at me. Yeah, you know, that, that face, when you're looking down, just yeah. like, what like, she sees. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> my, I'm holding my heels, the back of my heels back. <laughs> I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> I had to work on my hamstrings a little bit, but <laughs> and that and just you know, I got, I got yeah, ball, ball, ball on top, because yeah. yeah, that would be the like true. deep the <laughs> and I just think of how pathetic that would look after it kind of deflates. <laughs> <just standing there. laughs> oh, Jesus. No more filming. No more filming that anymore. Uh, yeah, no more home footage. I'd be like, oh, Austin. 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 Come on. Uh, no, Austin. All right. Gun to your head. You have to pick one food for your girlfriend to chew up and spit in your mouth. What do you pick? Oh. One's not even that bad. I know what I would do. Beans. It's refried beans. Oh fuck, dude. <laughs> beans in general are horrid, horrid by themselves. Um, I could pick anything because Maddie never chews her food. She just like swallows a whole <laughs> fuck. Gun to my head. I mean, I. C- I mean, obviously, I could do anything. Gun to my head, but to be like comfortable doing it. Uh, I'm thinking. I would say burger, because even if you chew that up, it's not going to get too, too mushy. There's, nah, it's steak. I just think about too, like, yeah. But <laughs> oh. if you just think about like, it already would have that kind of spit retention on it, and it's like, kind of chewed up to where like, you know, it would be easy to say pizza, but then have you ever had like pizza with a Jello consistency like <laughs> no. put into your mouth? That would just ruin uh, it for yeah. you. I don't know. I'm saying, yeah, I'm thinking like a. Applesauce pizza. True, that's a good idea. Uh, I, 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 I'm trying to think of when I chew foods, like what still feels decent in my mouth. Oh, true. That's a good point. Soup. Uh, <laughs> it would just turn into a chowder. <laughs> I almost thought ice cream. No. Yeah, that's a good question. Oatmeal. Uh, man, I don't know. Like nothing would I be guess, comfortable. I mean, it's all gonna be. Well, it would be shit. So I guess I'm gonna take my favorite food. It's gonna be pizza then. Good idea. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'm gonna go with burger, like Rob Yeah, said. that's a good thing. Like steak or something. What about you? Did you already say something? I said beans. Be- oh, I can't believe you still stuck with that. <laughs> well, you know, like if it was, I don't know. Like I feel like I used to eat refried beans as like my meal prep to get protein in. So it's like. I eat it cold out of the can, and it's already mushed up. And like she's that. heating it up for you. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, she's breaking it down. So, uh, gross. do we want to do one more? One more, yeah, man. Yeah. I feel like yeah, we, they're like, fun. I we could definitely get lost in these. Brock, read it. This is not that good. All right, we we need to hit yeah, on a banger. Hit on a banger. This one's stupid too. Oh my gosh. Someone else pick one. I'm not, I'm not. I'm doing pretty bad. Yeah. All right. Yes. I don't know. 
So I don't know what that means, though. We'd have to Google it. Oh, uh, I know, okay, no, I so know what it is. I know what it is. It, that's when... <laughs> Okay. You want? Yeah, no, right. so somebody, have to somebody explain, explain okay. it to me. Okay. Okay. So, uh, all right. Picture, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Picture. All right. You're two ends. All right. You're doing. Two me- or a man on each end. All right. Horizontal. All right. You read the question. Doggy style, back. and then the other person's <coughs> in her mouth. Your whole your your high five. High five. five. Oh, top over. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is Yo. <laughs> Is Eiffel Towering a chick with another guy gay? No. <laughs> no. Interesting. Eiffel what Towering. Makes you say so that? It's a Who's the middle? <laughs> Who's in the middle? The chick or the dude? The chick. No, the, the chick. The, the chick. Oh, the yeah. chick. Oh, the chick. Okay. It's then, gotta be the then chick. Then it's not gay. Totally not gay. Nobody's touching each other. It's up to the your high five. But yeah, that, that's like, like rock, paper, dude, scissors. The only rule is no Jenny to Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a fair fair play. True. That's a good point. Because, I don't know, as long as your eyes stay out of the way, then it's... Like your best friend? Yeah, you can't make eye contact for... Yeah, can't be long eye contact. I don't know, man. I feel like if I was drunk, I'd be like, fuck it. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Funny. I can't believe I never knew what Eiffel Towering was. Dude. Guess I guess I haven't watched enough. I need to step my game up. <laughs> I had a friend who did that, but <clears throat> New category? Caught something. So what? Uh, Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Front of back? Fr- well, a, a, a friend. So... A friend of yours that joined with you. No, no, no. I haven't done it, but they did that no. in uh, in college and caught something. It was uh, Fuck. with another guy and whoever who the girl was at the time. But that's the only case I've heard of somebody doing that. And it's like, oh, well, that didn't end well for them, so I'm not doing that anytime soon. It's bad luck. <laughs> Eiffel Towering. Damn. I know. That sounds pretty cool. That was a quick one. I know. I feel like I could keep, keep doing this. Let's see. Oh, let me do one more. That one's. That's I weak. want the ones that are like more of a juicy. Yeah. Well, I want to yeah. definitely have to debate it. Okay. Mary fuck kill. A Jehovah's Witness, a clown, a street performer dressed like the Statue of Liberty. Oh fuck. I'm killing the clown. That's no question. <laughs> That's an immediate answer. So then, what do I have? The street performer. And the Jehovah's Witness. The Jehovah's Witness. And who's the street performer? Uh, done? Who's dressed that? like the Statue of Liberty. I'll marry the street performer because hopefully they're entertaining. And then I guess I gotta fuck the uh, Jehovah's Witness. I was definitely gonna fuck the Jehovah's Witness just out of like spite. <laughs> <laughs> just because they're always like bugging, yeah. and it's like yeah. it's like a sp- like a spite fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like true. an angry one, and <laughs> and then uh. Who's the clown and the street performer dressed like the statue? Yeah, I can't Liberty. be with the clown, so I guess it'd be the same thing as Brock because I can't. There's no way I could marry a clown. No. Yeah. No way. I agree. Uh, yeah, I think I think I'm on the same page with y'all. Yeah, I'd probably do the same too. I was debating either marrying the I mean, Jehovah's Witness. Do we, do we consider the, the, street the, the clown like a Harley Quinn looking clown? Ah, oh, see that that, that looks hot. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. That's one clown. <laughs> uh, she's a clown. I'm expecting some like drugged out alcoholic, you know, yeah. fat <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. And most likely a dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easier to kill. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Well, we could probably go through these cards all night. But I believe that's a good point to finish. This is definitely wrapping up over two hours. And hopefully, if anybody did watch this long, thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully, we can get together more and get some topics going and whatnot. And this is just maybe the start of many more group sessions with the boys. Yeah. Maybe uh, you know we'll have some more detailed things to start off with and maybe move around. But this is definitely uh, something different, something new. And definitely want you all to... Recommend anything else you'd like to see us go over in the next few, I guess, All or Nothing shows. And uh, make sure you share it if you thought anything was funny. And uh, we'll catch you all next time. Peace.